What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay per view point edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. It's 2021. It's the Royal Rumble. It just went down. We're feeling happy. I'm feeling sneezy all over the place. Apologize about my uh, my voice and my nasally uh, tone and the amount of times I'm probably going to sneeze on this podcast. But uh, we got a lot of good things we're going to break down here. A couple little negatives as well. And, uh, you know, we're going to run down our first impressions and our thoughts just coming out of this pay-per-view and do the usual pay-per-view point stuff we normally do here. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango. And joining me, as always, I've got Robert D. Felice. It was really, really good. And Callum Wiggins. It's 2010 all over again. In I'm some ways. Hated. Add COVID. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, we're going back in time to that. Sometimes it's a little bit better. But yeah, um, we're all feeling good for the most. I mean, you know, it sounds like I feel like shit, but uh, you know, as far as the pay per views goes, we're, we're feeling really positive about this overall, right, guys? I love the winners of the Rumbles. I can't complain. Yeah, they got the winners. Well, they got the winners. They chose from the right group of people to potentially win these ones. So yeah, I can't complain. And the show overall was pretty good. Uh, of course, we are going to nitpick a couple things here and there. I've got one low point in particular for this pay-per-view that I'm going to talk about. But, uh, you know, whether it's positive or negative, if you agree or you disagree about the things that we say, we want to know what you got to have to say about this. What you got to have to say. I added that extra one in there. But you got to have to maybe what you want to say <laughs> about this pay-per-view. So by all means, share your opinions through all the different avenues that we've got. You can send a tweet at Smart Moment. You can post something on the Facebook page. You can put something on the page on SmartCutMoment.com. Or you can do the best thing possible, which is to join the discussion in the comments below on YouTube. While you're over there and you're leaving that comment, start hitting those other buttons that you got. You got the like button, you got the subscribe button, you got the notification bell, you got the share button, you got the join button, you got the applause button, and all that good stuff. Don't hit the thumbs down. That's a bad one. That one, uh, if you do that, then you get bad results for the next Royal Rumble. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, before we get into some of more of the specific things that are going on here, we just knock a couple other plugs out of the way just to you know kind of keep the flow of discussion going a little bit better. Uh, the join button on the YouTube channel is the same as the Patreon. Patreon.com slash moment is where you'll find the Patreon information. Even a dollar goes a long way in helping us grow. It's all greatly, greatly appreciated. $10 and up gives you access to the Dark Cast. Those are the uh, Patreon exclusive episodes we do. And there is the Pick Your Poison tier where you can request any kind of special feature that you would like. We do a couple of those, well, we do them whenever we come up, but we do a couple of those here and there, and the most recent one's coming up pretty soon, uh, probably on Tuesday is what I've got it scheduled for right now, where we rebook Starcade 1998. So, you know, if you're interested in any of those kind of things, hit up the Patreon there, go to the same things, and show all the likes and support and everything for fanboysanonymous.com. I'll talk uh, a little bit more about that later on, but... Just keep following us around, clicking on all a bunch of different things, and I'll toss out some other plugs a little bit later on, too. So, yeah. Again, apologize about my uh, my nasally uh, attitude for this. Not that attitude. Nasally sound. Let's talk about the kickoff for this. We had a couple different things going on. The Women's Tag Team Championship match was bumped up. But before we get into that, I want to talk about one of my favorite lines of the night, which was uh, Booker T goes, what's a sommelier? And I think it was Charlie was like, oh, it's a kind of sore of wines. And Booker T goes, so he's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. that. That must have been when I was messaging you about the other thing Charlie said. Oh, yeah, we found out some, uh, some stuff about Charlie. <laughs> Thumbs up on Charlie with that one. We also got our truth dressed up as Elmer Fudd. Because he was worried that Bugs Bunny was going to come after his 24-7 championship. Very good. He always finds a way to be a talking point. Love our truth And uh, after the match that we had uh, going on there, we had a gem from Jerry Lawler. He said, you know, my daddy was an electrician, and I was his first big shock. <laughs> no. I was like, oh, God, that's terrible. I love it. Yeah. Any other moments you guys have on the kickoff other than the, the match? Uh, no, I, the one that sticks out is what came later from that panel, but our truth is fantastic. I didn't listen to any of it. <laughs> I never, Fair enough. They, they, they 
they have given me no reason to do so in the past. It seems like I missed the only one where it's actually good. You know, uh, when we get to the Peacock thing, you're going to probably have to put it on just in case you miss something. You won't be able to go back and check it out. You know? Um, yeah. Women's tag team title match was first. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax won the titles, as we were kind of expecting. And uh, they did that in part through a distraction and some interference from Ric Flair and Lacey Evans. So that feud is just firmly still going on as expected again. And um, further proof that this whole tag title thing never really had any kind of a purpose to it. It's kind of a shame, but at least they're going back on a better route. Yeah, except, you know, one of the partners later eliminated the other, but that's okay. Nobody's counting. Oh, I was. I've been doing statistics all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this uh, match wasn't very good. I don't want kind of... this feud. I, you could say what you want about Charlotte, and plenty of people do, but she's better than this. I thought the um, match was I, okay. I, I'm more concerned about the Oscar thing. I don't really care about Charlotte and if whether she's worthy of a feud with Lacey Evans over her father or not. It's more about. The fact that Asuka is the women's champion, she came out first for this match because Charlotte's the biggest star out of the two of them. Yep. She was the one that was completely, like, who got the heat put on her so she'd get the hot tag to Charlotte because Charlotte's bigger star than she is. And she was the one that was basically thrown over the announce table and completely forgotten about for the finish of the match because Charlotte's bigger star than she is. So that's basically the story of Asuka as Raw Women's Champion for what's going on about... Well, essentially on and off. She had a oh, yeah. one-off one, yeah, one break with uh, Sasha having the title, but she's basically held the title for a good eight, nine months. And, and she's never once been the most important thing on, in the Raw Women's Division or any women's division. Yep. So the story of Oscar right now is you are the best in-ring option when we do not have the horsewomen. And we did not have the horsewomen. And now that we do, we're going to find a way to make you relevant again. And they've done a good job of that. Well, they made her irrelevant when they didn't have the horsewomen. Like, it, that's like, she's like you said, she's only there because she holds the title, but it's not that they actually give her anything to do. Like, her only feud that she had over the title recently was with Carmella. Not Carmella, um, Selena, Selena Vega. Vega. She's no, no longer even with the company. And that so, was like a three-week feud, I think? Yeah, something like that. They fought twice yeah. over the title, that's about it. But, yeah, Nasca then didn't defend the title for about two or three months, so... That's why but, I yeah. firmly think she's dropping that belt before Mania. Oh, yeah. absolutely. She, she'll drop it tomorrow, and it wouldn't even matter. It's, it's, more, it's more just the overall presentation. It's like the, they cut to like the backstage thing before the match where Charlotte cuts a little promo about both Lacey Evans and then the tag team titles, and then just say, what do you think, Asuka? And then Asuka just says, you're not ready for Asuka or Charlotte. And it's just like, she says the same things over and over again. They don't even give her anything creative to say. Yeah. Yeah. the same exact thing it's just it's it's so redundant with her right now i just kind of wish she would go she doesn't she she's she's great but she she could be used so much better in basically any other company she still made it a long time ago and i think she still made it because they decided just like this year charlotte flair means more than oscar i mean once she lost that undefeated streak Things kind of went downhill, which is a shame to say because she won the title multiple times since then, but it's never really mattered. Sure. Uh, Asuka went downhill for me when she lost the winning streak, and her answer was, Charlotte was ready for Asuka! Yay! Yeah, isn't yeah, Charlotte but... great? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then just the match itself gets dragged down by the fact that Nia Jax is incredibly slow. She doesn't take bumps. If she does, she makes sure that she's falling down a small amount of distance as she possibly can. So, and she had really terrible ring gear, which was just like... You know, like, you're, again, the, I don't want to... you're the second person who brought it up. I didn't think it was all that bad. It was I'm not to it. Yeah, it was just a bit too, like... I maybe mean, just the fact that it was just all one colour. Yeah, that always does look kind of worse. It's not nowhere near as bad as the blue one that she wore before, I think. No. No, but I just I don't kind don't kind of get the okay. This is a special event. I wear this all one colored from pursuit essentially. But, and yeah, the the results fine. It's what you'd expect. It's the Oscar and Charlotte don't need tag team titles right now. But yeah, I I just 
putting it on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler is just, okay, we don't have any plans for the women's division right now, so just put it on the team that had it before. And kind of wondering where they actually go with this now. And hopefully it has something to do with the winners of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. I well, agree, I think. I mean, go we're going to see if they <laughs> have a plan leading up to the next couple of months. I am firmly in the position that they don't have a plan and that they literally will not even start to think of one until around Fastlane. But I think they got a couple of options that they can go with here. They could go with Sexy Muscle Friends. I don't think they should. They could go with Riot Squad, or they could do something with the Dusty Cup, because it's weird. With the Dusty Cup, they've almost like specifically avoided saying they get a title shot. The one with the men's, they keep saying, and the winning team will get a future championship shot for the NXT titles. But with the women's, they every time they talk about it, they go, and they will make history as the first ever Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic trophy winners. Because that's as far as they've gotten. Because that's they know that that's a guarantee because that's just definitive. Like you just when you win, you win. If they didn't even have that planned, then that's just you know, the universe might as well cave in on itself with just one plus one now equals fi uh, 15. But like, uh, I don't think that they want to say that they'll get a tag title shot and then be forced to do a tag title shot. So I think that they're leaving it ambiguous enough where they can go. Well, we never said that they would get a title shot. And then if they decide to, then they can go and the winning team is going to get a title shot just on some random episode of NXT, but with like uh Shotzi and Ember or, the way or whatever it might be. I'm hoping at WrestleMania, the reason why they put the belts back on Jackson Baszler is because they actually are going to have a tag title match and it wouldn't have happened with, uh, Oscar and Charlotte. So I don't think that they should have gone in this direction to begin with last month or the months leading up to this, but at least I think that they're course correcting back to a better option than if they would have kept it on flair and Oscar. I didn't think that the match was too, too bad. So overall, I gave it a thumbs up. It wasn't my least favorite part of the night. Yeah, it established the ending that they needed to. So that's good enough for me. Then we went to the WWE Championship match. And <laughs> so I do my notes on uh, EWN while I'm watching this. And that's what I, I look back on uh, as we're doing these podcasts now. And the first note that I have is don't give it to Goldberg. Just don't. Time to cross your fingers. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I enjoyed this quite a bit. Yep. Absolutely. I like that they started off without the bell and they did the whole like uh, hit, uh, McIntyre gets speared through the barricade, which made me the way that they were intending made me be like, uh oh. Like, is that going to be how they get around this? Like, you know, he got speared outside, whatever like that. I like that uh, McIntyre was the first to strike with a headbutt. And that he hit the spear, which is cool. We got a couple of spears. We got a couple of, um, we got a, a jackhammer. Not the best jackhammer, but we've seen worse. <laughs> we've seen yeah. much, much worse than that. At least McIntyre landed on his legs. Uh, his feet kind of landed first instead of landing on his fucking neck. Uh, how many people have kicked out of the jackhammer before? Not many. Undertaker. Yeah, Undertaker, Lesnar. Lesnar. And Me McIntyre. Did no, Triple H? No. No, he d no, I don't think he they Even Triple H decided not to kick out of the uh, jackhammer. Who has kicked out of the jackhammer? Let's just double think check about this. I think somebody had to in WCW once because they fucked up a finish and so somebody had to kick out of it even though it was meant to be like the unbeatable finisher. I could imagine that there would have been something like Jarrett might have or something. Yeah, or, or Steiner or something like that. Might I'm have thinking if something. anybody, it's Steiner or Sid, but I don't think it's Jeff Jarrett. So according to this one Reddit post, somebody says that Hogan kicked out one time. That wouldn't surprise me. With a, a botch that Nash was supposed to interrupt. Wow, uh, that yeah, sounds exactly, right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's yeah, check this so, other article. Yeah, in the so, yeah, so Sports Keeda's article says that it's Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, and Brock Lesnar, the, pe the people prior to this night that kicked out the jackhammer. Good for, so good for Drew. Good for Drew, yeah. Look at that. We're <laughs> on the same page of that. <laughs> good for Drew. 
Uh, he lands a claymore, he wins, and um, I was super excited about that. Not only because uh, McIntyre is on my fantasy league team, although Goldberg is too. At this point, I covered my bases when it came to that, just in case. Um, but I like that they did the whole thing with Goldberg saying, "You passed the test, you deserve the belt," and it gives that rub to McIntyre's being like, "All right, now you've beaten another legend, and good job, kiddo." So, I'm uh. I enjoyed this match, right? I enjoyed this. I enjoyed Drew winning. I am over the Goldberg style match, though. I okay, we get it. All you do is the spear and the jackhammer. You don't even, you know, do a press slam anymore. And I don't want to see it for a while. They caught up to me from three years ago, <laughs> where I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm tired of the Brock Lesnar match, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. It's like, I, <laughs> I get it. Like that's if that's all you're gonna do, then don't do it anymore. We will see in about two months' time. Yeah, it's gonna be a WrestleMania. But uh... I do want to say Goldberg changed his gear for the first time in nearly twenty years. I thought something was different. Yeah, all black, uh, short trunks instead of the black and white, and of course, pretty long trunks. Yeah, yeah, it was basically like shorts, shorts at this point. Yeah. Um. There's something that you have to give to Goldberg matches in that you don't get a certain you don't get that level of urgency for somebody to hopefully win or lose a match that you do with the Goldberg match nowadays. It's like because if you see like if it was Drew McIntyre against I don't know Sheamus, let's say, go, oh I kind of want Drew McIntyre to win because it feels a bit more important. But eh, it's, if Sheamus wins, it's not the end of the world, or we'll just get over it. It's like it sucks, but we'll get over it. Whereas if Goldberg w- was to win, it's like oh my god, this is the end of the world. You can't have Goldberg <laughs> win, and then you're actually you're invested in a match rather than just watching it. You, there's more nail biting moments and. Yeah. five minutes of that match than there is in a 15 minute match with somebody else yeah, yeah. And, the, and the thing is it's almost like i don't want to give, give WWE credit for this but the fact that they have had goldberg beat brock lesnar they beat beating kevin owens for the title and beating the fiend for the title it means that they could go back they can they can always go back to this match and even if goldberg loses every single match he has with a future champion if they do decide to tread the water on this to, like tread back through this every now and again you're always going to think that he could potentially win it now so that's that they can always go back to that and think like that's always going to be that little bit of like heart st- st- starting moment where he hits that jackhammer or hits a spear and you just go, oh my god, is he actually going to win the title? Yeah. So, so I don't want them to do it all the time, but I think once, twice a year, and and, sh- and let's face it, he shouldn't always be going for the title. No. Or, or actually, um, at this point, he should never be going for the title, but he should just be fighting people that want some people could potentially put over and some people that he can be just to look, just to get that nice Goldberg pop again. And I don't mind either when they did like that Dolph Ziggler match where it was yeah. just like, hey, right, yeah, beat the shit good. out of Ziggler. He, he can like, take on Sami Zayn and beat him and I'm totally cool with it. Yeah. And it wouldn't make somebody like a Sami Zayn look bad because he's fucking Goldberg. You know, it's like, oh, man, you lost a fight with that brick wall. OK, <laughs> the guy's got one of the best win loss records of anybody in the history of professional wrestling. So he can perpetually beat anybody. I mean, he's at a point now where. Other people looked worse than he does now, 20 years before the point that he's at now. Like, this guy looks better than a lot of other people that's on the roster, just as far as, like, physicality looks. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like what how they used him here. I don't have any idea what they might do with him for WrestleMania. You guys have anything that you think they might be, like, sitting on? I mean... I can't say certain about the WrestleMania side of things. I mean, we don't even know if his usage. We know he has two matches a year in his contract, or at least as far as that's been reported. And so that means they could save him for SummerSlam instead mm. if they have plans already for WrestleMania. Or, God forbid, they try to do another like Saudi show at the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. So if they, if they do have that sort of thing potential, they might skip him out on WrestleMania because I can't think of anyone in particular that stands out unless they decide to do a Strowman match. If they're really gung ho on Mania in particular, they'll find a way to either get him in the ring with Orton or, hey, John, can you do this one? John Cena was one of the only other ones I was thinking of because I mean, we'll talk about it later on. Um, there's a chance maybe it's the Roman Reigns match again still, but 
I don't really 100% think so. And it would seem kind of weird if he lost this match with Drew McIntyre and then he ends up fighting Roman Reigns. But, I mean, last year, Roman Reigns just like, hey, me. And they're like, all right, there you go. You get a title shot. So maybe they do that again this time, too. They just do the opposite or something. I don't know. But I'm more curious about that now than I was before, which is good for you know TV ratings. Like, it's more of a reason to watch. So thumbs up on that overall. And it's better than if they would have just gone with, like, Drew McIntyre defends the title against uh, I don't know, Mustafa Ali. As much as I like Ali, I never would have thought he had any chance to win the title anyway. So, you know, step in the right direction, I think. And yeah, yeah anything else? Uh, I just, the right person won. They did a lot of good tonight and they kicked it off proper with the right person winning. And they didn't have Drew McIntyre look like a fool after dedicating the match to people struggling with COVID. So good <laughs> for this company. That's where Vince comes out and goes, doesn't matter if you dedicate it to the people with COVID, because I can be COVID. <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. Then we went to the SmackDown Women's Championship match. I was really low on this going into it, because I thought, well, who cares? Sasha Banks already beat Carmella, and you just carried the feud on for like three months, and it just doesn't matter. But I actually enjoyed the match quite a bit. Uh, Reginald is a star. He's very good, and he adds to this package that Carmella has been bringing. He should have been in the Royal Rumble. He should have. Imagine like some kind of weird, like uh, going through the ropes type thing. He could have been able to do. Yeah, this match I... was. It, it's it's a, it's a good match. Uh, Carmella's improved significantly in the ring over the last couple of years. She's now up to the point where she's totally capable of going into the ring. And w- when she has somebody like Sasha Banks to work with, then she can have really good matches. So, yeah, there, I mean, you've got a bit like finisher spammy towards the end, but that's like the typical WWE formula nowadays. So I can't be too mad at it. And Carmella rightly tapped out. Reginald got involved in a few bits and pieces, which were some fun spots. I don't know what you can really do with him beyond this point. Because how does he kind of break away to to launch his own kind of singles career off the back of this. I don't really know because he's already demonstrated that he can't beat Sasha Banks. He's apparently a foot smaller than Sasha Banks in certain camera views. <laughs> so, so I don't really know what he can do beyond this point, but for what, for right now it's fun. Like a new storyline where he, uh, he goes to rehab because he's an alcoholic according to Booker T and then he, <laughs> you know, he bounces back and you know, that kind of thing. I have a note here, um, missed opportunity that they didn't do the exaggerated hand spin when the referee sent Reginald out of the ringside area, because it's always more fun when it's all like the, you know, spin your hands around, like, you're out of here, that kind of thing. And instead they did, the referee was just like, hey, Reginald, hey, hey, look at me, look at me, you're out of here. <laughs> it's like, that's a little bit awkward. Right after that, though, Carmella hit a suicide dive, and Oof. that was a little scary. Yeah, that was... Right on her yeah. face. That yeah, was scarier did, than yeah. anything in the last man standing match. <laughs> no, she she did that in the same sort of like that that was a very Sasha type move that she pulled off there with that one. Mm-hmm. But uh but, but yeah, she recovered from it. I was like worried that she would just come up and her like just her face would have peeled off or something like that because it was just Feel like a little just... swollen, a little bruising. Yeah. Like like her face ended up like looking pretty much the same as like Randy Orton's one, which is perfectly fine by the end of it. <laughs> Because uh, Randy's showing no effects from uh, being burnt a lot. But, that's well, a being good sign. Early. I'm hoping that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I had fun watching this match. Absolutely no problems with it whatsoever. I was not a big fan of the Bad Bunny song. Gotta admit that. Not my thing. <sighs> it was a thing. I, I enjoy Booker T just standing in the middle doing nothing. Not a damn thing. <laughs> well, well, that's that's what he does in the music video as well. So I know, but it's that. even better in real time. He's just standing there and just drops the can you dig it. I like it. Bad Bunny, here's the thing. He's not my cup of tea, but he's legitimately popular. It's not like when they try to tell you... Uh, I keep going back to this one only because it's recent. Hardy at Tribute to the Troops. Bad Bunny had the most streamed album of 2020. He's legitimately part of pop culture. If they can get that rub, I'm all for it. And he did a, 
well, spoiler, but he did a cross body later in the show that looked better than some indie performers. The fact that he is a popular person, I'm assuming, according to what you're saying, and the way that they're advertising it is like, oh my god, we got this guy here, like that'll give us more media coverage. I don't blame him, by the way, for like doing something that'll get media coverage. I just I've never liked musical performances on these kind of things. Listen back to the super spectacle. I'm like, I don't like dance performances either. I want to watch pro wrestling. So, um, to me, it's just kind of like, oh man, like that's popular. <laughs> kind of like, why are things that are popular not good sometimes? Why is it a Booker T song? Because he grew up a wrestling fan, and he's just like, I I don't speak Spanish. That's a fault of many people, but. uh he says on the king like Booker T. Apparently, that's the whole deal because he, uh, I guess, was growing up during the King Booker days. Yeah, thumbs down for me, but it's not for me. So it's not like it's some kind of like thumbs down because it's uh everybody's going to agree universally that it's terrible booking or something. It's just it's not my thing. So somebody probably is like, "Bad buddy, so fucking great, and I love his music." And like, yeah, I'm never gonna listen to it again. <laughs> Uh, later on in the night, we had a whole thing with uh, The Miz and um, John Morrison setting up the return of Bad Bunny later on in the night. We'll talk about that in the, the other match. Mm. Yeah. But we then went to the 30... 30- no, 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 can I at least reference this fact? This guy, The Miz, <laughs> he's holding a briefcase which gives him an opportunity for a WWE or Universal Championship shot, and he's doing fucking comedy routines with Bad Bunny. Give it back to Otis. Give it to fucking Santino. Give it to Reginald. <laughs> give it to give it to R Truth. Give it to Peter Rosenberg, who's the new twenty four seven champion as well. We'll talk about that, obviously, stuff like that. Just give it to yeah. anybody, because Miz has absolutely zero credibility. Zero. It's neg- Actually, it's negative <laughs> credibility. He makes he makes John Morrison worse <laughs> by association. I like when Callum gets inspired about that. <laughs> It's just that like, they did this whole trade over with Otis and the Miz, and then they've made Wiz, Miz even worse in the process of him holding that briefcase. I just don't see the point in it. Like, why are you making this briefcase complete? It's getting to the point where I think, I don't really want money in the bank to come back anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, I just I'll want it to go. Replace it with something else. Uh, we'll have uh, King of the Ring instead. I'll, I agree with Callum. This is the year, and I've said this, I think I said this on the preview that i want them to rehab money in the bank and if they don't do it this year then maybe it's time to not do it correct <laughs> in some ways i still think that the Miz has value but they're really almost purposely trying to make it seem like he doesn't which is a shame let's talk about the women's royal rumble match uh I am still going through some statistics. You will find those on smartgammama.com. Uh, I've got most of them up already, but the only reason why it's not completely finished is because we don't know each individual person's time. So by the end of, I'm hoping tomorrow, there's going to be a new setup of like the average time for cumulative time for every single woman in the history of the Royal Rumble and the same for the men's and you know, different elements like that. But we got most of the statistics figured out. And I'm going to run this down as, as much as we can. Uh, you can check to see each individual entry. We're not going to, you know, it's Bailey, then it's Naomi, and then it's Bianca and whatever. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of keep it to some some talking points, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me move my uh, my screen over here so I have like three screens. I had at one point 23 tabs open while I was doing the coverage for this event i was just like ah, i'm tired of clicking everything but um we got bailey we got naomi so at this point i was thinking to myself all right well you know we got naomi returning that's cool bailey is starting off so that means that bailey's probably going to be the iron woman and bianca belair comes out of number three and i'm like all right well there goes bailey being the iron woman <laughs> bianca better last longer than that and one of the bigger not one of the bigger stories one of the um it took up more time than some of the other things in this Royal Rumble was Billy Kay came out at number four and they kept her off on the side. We got Chatsy, we got Shayna and Billy Kay kept trying to make friends with each person that came out. And I thought that this was great. She tries to go over for Shotzi. Shotzi shoots the rocket from the tank at her. She tries to go with Shayna. Shayna Shayna's just like, nah, Tony Storm. Nope. Uh, Shotzi unfortunately gets eliminated. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, it's a shame. 
Then we get Jillian Hall comes out. Did not see that one coming. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a blow from the post. Or... Uh, I I've said this a few times now, but I, Jillian makes history as the first grandmother to enter a no. Grandmother. Jillian grandmother? grandmother. She's a grandmother. Yes. How old is she? She's in her forties. I think her her daughter is like eighteen, and she had a kid. Wow. Her daughter had a kid early, but she is a grandmother. Grandmother in the match. Well, was uh no. No, Never mind. I was just like, no. Nah, huh. Never got that. Uh, so that was interesting. I have to say, the Billy Kay thing was one of the best Royal Rumble bits I've seen in years. Billy Kay was hysterical tonight. She uh, she was like, we could be Billy and Jilly. <laughs> and Jillian Hall was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I liked that Ruby Riot came out afterward and Billy Kay was like, oh, I can still try to be friends with her and the Riot Squad and whatever. Like she's cool, you know. She gives her the thumbs up and whatever. I thought that that was neat. That that kind of whole mini section of the rumble was completely dedicated to Billy Kay. Yeah, it seems because like that happened, and then Peyton Royce comes out, and so they reform the Iconics briefly for a little while. You have Liv Morgan out there for a little while as well. So you got all of the Riot Squad out there, and uh, Billy's trying to be nice to Peyton, but she's also trying to be nice to the Riot Squad and be nice to Jillian, and then Jillian eventually turns on her and. Billy Kay eliminates Jillian Hall, and then she's celebrating, and then the right squad eliminate her, which yeah. is a big <laughs> move, really. Yeah, I liked, uh, I liked all that. I thought that was great. Uh, the, one of the best things about the right squad eliminating her, Peyton's in the background, so proud of Billy for eliminating Jillian, and she just looks so crushed when the right squad eliminates Billy. Oh, like I didn't she catch wanted that. to help her, she didn't know. I have to go back and check that out. Oh, I yeah, that was, that. That, that was a nice camera angle from that. Number 10 uh, in the meantime of that was Victoria. And I was like, fuck well, yeah. Like, finally. Yeah. I like audibly said, finally, as soon as I heard her music. Yeah, I really have been wanting her to come back for years. It's a shame, of course, like everything else that happened on this night. It's a shame that it wasn't like an actual crowd there. But yeah. I'm very glad that she's back in the mix because she fucking deserved it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was a great uh, moment for her to come back. She... Was a little bit slower. She, yeah. But uh, she hasn't she hasn't missed too much for B. I was a bit annoyed that they didn't let her do the moon salt. I don't know whether she can still do the standing moon salt, which I guess is part of the element to it. But she might yeah, not. She, yeah. got that, she got there and she got to last for a little while before being eliminated. Yeah, she was taken out by uh, Shayna Baszler, who got the second most amount of eliminations on this. Uh, Santana Garrett was in this. I haven't seen her in a, I don't know, freaking when. She didn't have a great run. Uh, she got eliminated by surprise, surprise. entry number she fourteen. Um, yeah, she, yeah, she was there to just you know, yeah, make other numbers for when Rhea Ripley comes in and starts tearing house. Her spot might have been like Mia Yim's or something. I'd be curious to know, and we'll probably never know, but I'd be curious to know what their plans were leading up to this week, and what changed, because we yeah. know for a fact that reckoning Mia Yim. And Keith Lee, and I would assume at this point that it's probably a fact that Jey Uso was kept out of this because of COVID. I don't know for Ooh, sure. Due to some reason, obviously, we, we don't yeah. know whether it's COVID, but it's some reason that he's been kept out of this one. He's been missing in a couple weeks, and with the way that things are going these days, more than oh, yeah, likely, it's, it's, that's it's why. It's fair, it's fair, yeah, it's a, it's a fair assumption, but obviously we don't know what the situation yeah. is with that. So, I'm curious, like, where some of those replacements were. Like, was Ricochet put into the match even though he had lost his potential match because he was covering Keith Lee or, you know, whatever it might be. Santana yeah. Garrett might have just been a part of it anyway. I mean, they, they might have just been like, yeah, you know what? Like, you could be a part of it this year. Why not? But she didn't really do too much. Um, Rhea Ripley took her out. Rhea Ripley went on to tear here and there. Charlotte Flair, Dana Brooke. Uh, Dana Brooke had some some spots here and there. Um, the way that... Uh, people. The way that... Uh, Oh, I forgot to mention this. The way that uh, Bailey eliminated Ruby Riot, I liked that a lot. That she went underneath Ruby and power bombed her. I don't think I, we've seen that before. I, I got a little bit weird, not sort of weirded out by it, but yeah, that was a good elimination. But the odd thing about it was that Peyton and Billy, Bailey, uh, Bailey, yeah, yeah, both eliminate, well, both combined in some form or fashion to eliminate both members of the Riot Squad, and I was very, very confused <laughs> about are they teaming up? Like, are they doing yeah. such a weird? Like team between Bailey on SmackDown and Peyton Royce on Raw, and then Peyton immediately started trying to eliminate Bailey, and so I was completely just thrown off by the intellect thing. 
I thought yeah. that was a little strange too. Yeah. I did enjoy the power bomb though. That was a unique elimination that I'm surprised we haven't seen before. I I like that they got rid of Liv Morgan as kind of like payback for that. It's a shame they're on separate brands. There's a few times tonight in the men's rumble where I'm like, all right, I don't know where you land. Because this doesn't make sense with the brand split, but then again, nothing does. So I guess we'll see. I remember quarterly, every quarter <laughs> you can. Uh, every come... quarter, the entire Raw roster can appear on SmackDown if they so wish to. Right. But the elimination with Ruby Riot, like that a lot. The elimination with uh, Rhea Ripley taking out Dana Brooke was pretty scary. Yeah, those, those were just. <laughs> yeah. She had two eliminations in this match that were just absolutely sickening, just landing right on the apron. It was just... So, yeah, it was um, Dana Brooke, and I think afterwards she did one too. I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, trying to look down this. It was Santana, I think. Yeah, it was yeah, Santana's one. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just like, just ones where they were just face-plying on the apron. It was just... Like unnecessarily forceful with some of these eliminations was rare. Well, I think that she lost her grip, and because it was like she was holding Dana Brooke in a way that it seemed like she was like, "Oh man, she might fall." And then if she ends up being one of the ones that's towards the end, they're gonna be fucked. You know, this is gonna be like a Steve Austin in '96 kind of um, scenario. But she managed to hold on because Rhea Ripley's strong as fuck and uh, just Actually, slammed the, the hell totally out of. Her. As she was decoded. Like, oh, she dumped really her bad. ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a rough yeah. one. Yeah. Lacey Evans, uh, Peyton tossed out. Tori tossed out. Bailey tossed out. We got Mickey James. Yeah, but Tori Wilson. Tori Wilson appeared in the rumble. Oh yeah, skip Tori. How did I skip Tori? Uh, Tori Wilson looking great as always. She looks phenomenal. She, she always does. She just doesn't age. Yeah. No. She does not age. Arguably looks better now than she did before. I said the same thing while I was watching it. Which is just absolutely nuts. Uh, she's, more, she's more in like uh, again, again, I don't want to think of places, but she's more she's more in the fitness side of it now, rather than having to I don't say carry extra weight, but has to carry a different kind of body shape due to the fact that she'd be taking taking bumps on a more regular basis. Now she's more I don't say toned, but more just like she can she can be in a bit more of a, a lighter frame, let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean she always looked great, but like Oh yeah, she's always looked great, yeah. You know. When you go from like uh, an A plus to an A plus, it's kind of like yeah, yeah. that's insane. Um, Mickey James came out; she looked great too. She always looks great too, so that's not surprising. Uh, they referred to her as another legend. That really bothered me. So I'm like, damn it! They really want to just push her away, don't they? Uh, well, they yeah. dug her up from somewhere, clearly, because she wasn't. <laughs> she she they clearly wasn't. Um, they they must have found. Oh, well, they obviously found her on the Legends Night and stuff like that, and then just put like, her back in the put her back in the box, and then wait for the Royal yeah. Rumble to throw. Well, like you out, clearly yeah. had this woman under contract, and you're just sweeping her away. Mm -hmm. uh, I insane. forgot to mention, uh, Peyton Royce had a dicey elimination when she oh, yeah. uh, she got oh, dumped yeah, over yeah, she did, and did splits, didn't she? Yeah, I was yeah. like that could have been pretty bad. Yeah, bad uh, timing for Jillian Hall was in this Rumble match longer than she was ever in any other match I can ever recall her being in. <laughs> Maybe. So, she lasted like, longer than I thought she would. I thought so she'd be, like, her. eliminated immediately. I don't know at this point still who had the shortest time. I think it was Alexa Bliss. Yeah, I think it was Alexa, yeah. But at this point, people have only really calculated, like, Naomi's time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, right now, still, according to the Wikipedia, the only time that people have listed is Naomi. I don't get that. Yeah, especially because we know what Bianca's time was, but... Whatever. Um, bad timing for Bailey's elimination as well. Oh, yeah, they completely missed it. Totally missed it for Mickey James's entrance. It's weird when, like, if you hear the countdown clock, why are you going along with the elimination? Why don't you just wait five seconds? You know? No, it wasn't. It wasn't an entrance. It was. Yeah, someone Shana else got that idea. Took a little too long eliminating either Dana or Mandy, and. It, it was Peyton, and then it was Tori eliminated by Baszler. Oh, but yeah, okay, it was Tori. And it just cost the Bailey elimination. Yeah, it was a shame. One of the bigger eliminations completely missed, but yeah, shit happens. Nikki Cross came in. She's a little spitfire, like normal. I don't know her theme song. Cause I don't like it at all. Like, who is that? Yeah, that was one of the ones that made me for a split second go, uh, who is this? Oh, okay, Nikki Cross. 
And then we got Alicia Fox come out, and I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, right, I so like. This, all right. So this was the low point of the entire Rumble, and it's not because of Alicia Fox, because Alicia Fox is great, but then the fucking 24 7 big, big brigade start piling into the ring. And like, I, I liked a, it. A lot of people. Um, I know, I, I know you did keep it like this, but it's just like, <laughs> but it's just kind of like there doesn't need to be any. And again, I, I, maybe maybe people will pillar me for this for saying this. You don't need any male involvement in the women's Royal Rumble match, and I think, it and it makes the match, and the match was good overall. And again, I don't want to discredit anything like that because I think they put some really good stuff together, but it makes the match seem like a joke because you throw this twenty four seven bullshit in there. 24-7, it's total bullshit, and it shouldn't be involved in a match of this magnitude. See, if that would have came at a random-ass time, like, yeah, I don't know, uh, Ember Moon comes out, and then Nia Jax, and then whatever, like, then if they would have just thrown that in there, I think I would have been down on it. But Alicia Fox has always been, like, kind of the other crazy character, like, with R-Truth. So I like that they did this, because it was like, well, she's nuts, R-Truth comes out, and she wins the 24 seven championship from him. That made me like it because then that was like, okay, well I know what you're going for here. You're going for, she's nuts. He's nuts. Look at that. She won a title. Mandy Rose comes out. Mandy Rose eliminates Alicia Fox pretty quickly. And our truth wins the title back. And I'm like, all right, the, the story of Alicia Fox in this one was you're the crazy girl. Let's get the crazy guy to come out and do some kind of a thing. And, and she got a spot, you know, I mean, that's one of the talking points for this is, you had a title change in the middle of it, which I'm going nuts about because I've got, like I said, like 20 something tabs open. And I'm like, all right, number 21 is Alicia Fox. And our truth just came out. And oh my God, now there's a title change. Let me go and add a title change to the other thing. And every time that there's a title change, I have to add three different uh, posts. So I'm doing three different posts about that. And then Mandy Rose comes out. Then Mandy eliminates Alicia. Then our truth wins the title back. And I'm like, ah! I'm like, it's just kind of like, can I pause time? Kind of, but. I thought that that was funny. I liked it a lot. That was one of my favorite parts of this. I land right in the middle of you guys. So I agree with Tony in that I think this segment was salvaged by the idea that Alicia was able to get a moment because people do like Alicia Fox. However, Callum is 100% right. You don't need this. And this really did take away a good five minutes from the Women's Royal Rumble that was otherwise a flawlessly booked. Royal Rumble match. Then we got Dakota Kai. We got Carmella, one of the examples of somebody who had a match for a title earlier in the night and gets another chance to go into the Royal Rumble anyway, which no problem, really. I'm all right with it because Reginald. And uh, she doesn't last long at all because by the time that the next person comes out, who is Tamina, Carmella gets eliminated. Yeah. So yeah kind, of, uh, kind of pointless. I mean, they told the little story about her being saved by Reginald first of all, but then Reginald couldn't save her the second time. So yeah, uh, Tamina lasted a while here. Usually, Tamina's like, "Oh, you come in, you're a monster for two seconds, and then you're out." Tamina got a good showing here, and I appreciated that. And um, we got the thing with uh, Naomi doing. Here, here's a problem. Oh, right, that that sucks again. That was another sucky part of this rumble. Yeah, you can't just lay on your back and say that your feet haven't touched the floor. It's not. That's not. Yeah. That shouldn't be allowed. That should be against the rules. Because more part of your body is touching the floor than than your feet. So, see, that's not my issue with it. My issue with it is this is, I think, the third time that Naomi has done something that somebody else has already done. Yeah, because Morrison did it in a um in a battle royal kind match. Casey Catanzaro did it. She landed with her feet up. And then she scooted her way over to the um, ring post and yeah. then I think, I flipped herself. Kind of the, yeah, I think it's kind of the admission of the fact that they don't actually, they can't think of any new ways of doing this. Well, the problem is they did do, like, that one was different, I think. I don't remember Morrison doing that exact same thing. But, like, Kat and Zaro had it. a he different way. A, he, did, he didn't do it in a strictly Royal Rumble match. He did it in a Raw Rumble match. Oh, uh, okay. So then I just don't remember that one. Yeah. But like Kofi created a whole bunch of these. John Morrison was the first one to do them with the, um, they always call it the Spider-Man move, but like Morrison did that. Then Kofi took things to a whole new level. And then Naomi just keeps doing the same ones that 
somebody else has done. Like she did the whole thing with the chair and it was like, yeah, Kofi did it like two years before that. And then she did the whole, well, I'm going to go on the barricade and then I'm going to jump over. And it's like, eh, Kofi and Morrison have yeah. done that. Well, and, you know, like, I, I kind of feel like maybe we should stop giving Naomi the spot unless she can think of something new. Well, yeah. in, in fairness, it is kind of difficult when you don't get the Women's Royal Rumble until eight years after the guy started doing this stuff. So, yeah, but I mean, up. then all the more reason for you to say I could have done these things. I mean, Casey didn't come up with anything super like she. The the only thing that she can do differently is the fact that she can climb a pole up because she was an injury warrior. Like she, Casey couldn't do any other spot other than the one that she did in that rumble. I'm, I'm I feel 100 percent confident in saying. So I just don't think anybody else can kind of do something super innovative. I think if you ask Kofi or John Morrison now, I don't think they'd be able to figure out something. I was disappointed, uh, by the way, about that. I was disappointed we didn't get Kofi in any capacity because I know that he said that he wasn't cleared to compete, but he was there. And I was like, well, maybe he can help like uh, Big E save himself. That's like a little twist yeah, on it. Yeah, I was it. hoping you would say Woods. Woods, yeah, Woods could have been able to do something probably. And instead, he just didn't. So I was disappointed in that. Um, I well, here's the only thing I'll say about that is I appreciate that they didn't force it. And, like, I get the Naomi thing isn't your thing, and I understand. But at the same time, it makes a certain segment of the audience very happy, so they're just going to let it happen. But I do feel like you shouldn't force these dramatic saves every single year. Oh, I like the dramatic saves, and I would like to get one every year. I just want to get something a little bit different from Naomi. To me, if... Like if next year Naomi does the um, a group of people on the outside or a bunch of partiers and they all carry them like what happened with Kofi and Adam Rose's crew, then it'll be like that in 2015. Like just do something different. Like you got a year to think of it. Try some different stuff out. Well, think of something. I mean, and... Nobody thinks a year about this sort of stuff. They Kofi think about it day... Yeah, yeah. They think about it the day before it starts because that's what any, that's what any rational person would do. I think anybody who cares could take a who week, cares about, a month. Cares about doing a, a moment in a match which they're not going to win and no one's going to remember about the day afterwards anyway. If that's the case, then don't do it at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, said, don't force it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, if it's like, well, it'll make people happy, then make them happy. Oh, it'll make them happy yeah. if we don't put any effort into it. Well, then put effort into it. Like, we'll make I don't them know, happy like, anyway. Like Rob says, like Naomi has a big section of fans that are really, really behind her, and they're going to be happy. They're going to be happy if she just like landed on one foot and hopped around like certain other people have done and stuff like that. That's basically she could have done whatever and they'd still be happy about it. So yeah, to me though, if you if you start making the argument of whatever you do is going to be fine, then I say put the littlest meta effort into it possible. Just have Naomi come out, period, and don't do one of those spots. Then save it for somebody else or something. So you know i mean there i actually there was a different spot that wasn't even anywhere like near as good as what that could have potentially have been that i liked a lot better and we'll get to that but and uh T tamina came out she lasted longer than i expected lana came out alexa bliss came out she got eliminated quicker than i expected i like that uh rhea ripley was like nope you're not changing <laughs> i just dumped her over I, just, I i found it like just again hilarious about like alexa comes in does a few spots and then like at, like five or six women gang up on this five foot yeah. tall, like <laughs> tiny l l lady just like all just pan down her like she's the second coming of um she got the like, maple spot yeah ex yeah exactly and then they do the thing where the cameras change and you expect her to turn into the fiend but nope she's thrown out by Rhea Ripley just before she can turn into the fiend so it's a good I sign <laughs> it's a good <laughs> sign of things well it's a sign that. That like, it wasn't important that enough. That, that, that it's a delayed process. So you can kind of break the process halfway through, but it's also a sign that, yeah, that process is still there and it's not going to go anywhere. So, But I'm okay with it because it also says it wasn't important enough that it didn't take up any time in either rumble. I like when we come back to a thing that I rant about eventually and it ends up being like, yeah, I don't like it either. I agree with you. <laughs> I'm like, uh, Bray Wyatt's just a guy, another guy in a mask, and it's, it's the same Bray Wyatt, and then, a, you know, a year or two or three or whatever later, and it's being, it's like, yeah, you know what, he's the same one, fuck him. <laughs> like, I don't know. 
uh, Ember Moon comes out and uh, yeah, she does her thing. She botches somewhat. Um, her finisher just didn't connect like at all. So I've been taking a lot of stuff with uh, Ember Moon lately. Can I just say that the new theme songs blow? And there's so many theme songs I heard tonight that I'm just like, it took a while to register. Like, I don't know who this person is. And then you know what their argument then becomes? Well, then that's why we have everybody say their name in the beginning of it. So, you know, blue collar worker man. Okay. So I actually like his one, but like, uh, Gosh. what song, by the way, this is bugging the shit out of me. What song is it that Peyton Royce is ripping off? Not that she's ripping off. She didn't like make the song, but there's some kind of like, I keep thinking it's like pour some sugar on me. Or something, but there's a song that's like in that era that they're clearly referencing, and I can't put my finger on it. Well, she was definitely one of the ones that when she came out, I didn't notice, so I I can't say off the top of my head, but we'll let's see if I can hear it. Drop a comment below if you got any ideas, anybody, because there's something like you know how like DDP's theme was very clearly Nirvana, and then. It is pour some sugar on me. I'm listening to it. It is pour some sugar on me. Okay, because yeah. I was just like, it's something like that where it's just, it's very clearly what can we do that's very similar and it's to that. It's honey, so. Uh, ah, even yeah. more so. Yeah, surprised it's not pour some honey on me. Nijax comes out, and uh, we get a whole series of eliminations with uh, Shayna and Naya, and that includes Shayna being eliminated by Naya, which I figured that would be coming a mile away, and. Thankfully, we got a uh, scenario where this is one of the things that I want to commend them for, for these two Royal Rumbles in particular. They did a good job tonight referencing past teams and referencing past feuds because they had like Nia and Shayna don't get along. They're a tag team, but they've never liked each other. So, of course, Shayna Baszler gets eliminated by Nia Jax because she's stupid enough to take out her teammate. And... Before that, it was like, Nia was like, ah, I can't really get rid of Tamina because she's she's family and whatever. Okay, a little bit of continuity there. And then Lana gets to eliminate Nia. Like, good, all right. We don't have to touch on that story anymore. That's good enough, <laughs> you know? It's not worth having gone through the whole process to get to that point. This is not a good enough payoff, but you know what? I'm fine with moving on. I have one problem here, and that's, despite being eliminated by Nia Jax, Shayna then just jumps in the ring and helps out Nia Jax lay out the final five women, and I didn't get that. Well, at this point, neither of them is going to win, so you might as well just beat the crap out of other people. Uh, so, so I was convinced after, like, Natalia comes down number 30, and then she's just immediately jumped by both uh, Jax and Baszler. I was immediately thinking, okay, Natalia's not getting the number 30 spot, and someone else is coming out. Yeah. yeah. And... I think they did that deliberately to tease people and then just threw Natalia in the ring and so now <laughs> Natalia's in the in the match. Uh which I guess is is fine. It's just like it's a nice little okay, okay, like it makes people potentially excited for it and then just deflates them a little bit once they get involved in the, the, the side of things. They again do this whole teammate splitting like former teammate splitting again by having Natalia throw Lana out. Yeah, you can cross a lot of things of the – if you go to the statistics page on Smart Come Moment, there's a section of it that's like tropes that they do all the time. And I was just like, all right, we can cross off the uh, – a teammate eliminates another member, uh, t former teammate or a teammate that they're still teaming with, with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler and the Na uh, Natty and Lana thing. I'm like, you can cross off the former teammates hug it out. That happened with Lana and Natalia. They did a lot of those things tonight. They they kind of like if they looked at the list of things to do in a Royal Rumble, they're like, let's have somebody get attacked on their entrance. Let's have, you know, somebody come in and interfere when they're not in the match. Let's have this. Let's have that. I like it when they do that kind of thing. Uh, the Natty thing, it did set up a thing for me where I was just like, oh, maybe she is going to get replaced. And maybe that's why they did the whole backstage thing because they knew that the surprise wouldn't actually be thrown out. And then they throw Natty in the ring, and I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah. And then when it gets down to the final four, you just know it's actually a final three, and Natalia's just yeah. there for a little while before she gets thrown out. But they and even then... did it, too. They tossed oh, yeah. Natty out, and then Ripley, I think it was, looked at the other two and was like, 
we're the final three. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, they put the absolutely perfect final three. Yeah. Like, there's no question, shadow of doubt, this was the final three to go with. And they wrestled for a little bit. They had like a bit of a mix up between the three of them. And then they eliminated the perfect person to eliminate, which is Charlotte first. Yep. Because at that point, women... you, at, most people, I would assume, are sitting there going, no, I'm okay with oh whoever God. wins. You know, Ripley wins. Great. Bianca Belair wins. Great. Yeah. But that you have to have Charlotte there at the end, though, just to give them that little bit of doubt in their mind that, oh, my God, they're going to have Charlotte mm -hmm. win again. And I had that kind of uh, fear. I was like, uh, there was one part of it where Ripley and Belair were both close to the ropes. And I'm like, oh, my God, Charlotte's going to come over and she's going to dump them both. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. She got eliminated. I'm like, all right, cool. Even if Ripley doesn't win, because I was rooting for Ripley a little bit more than Bel Air, but it's kind of like a narrow type of thing. I'm like, I like both of them. Both of them I want to be champion, all this other kind of stuff. So I'm like, I can't lose at this point, despite the fact that Ripley's on my fantasy league team, but I don't fucking care. Um, and I liked the little spot where they did here, where the two of them were hanging on the end and Ripley was like, hold on time out let's not do anything stupid let's get back in the ring <laughs> i was like that's good you know it's like we've watched 30 of these uh, 30 something of these go down we know that charlotte can come and just screw this up let's get back into the ring <laughs> and just a good fraba kind of moment i like that a lot yeah big fan they of bell air winning too yeah they had a good exchange towards the end of it it's obviously not quite the level of like Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, but it was a good like back and forth battle between the two of them. They exchanged certain attempts at their finishing holds. You had some teases of them going over the top, but eventually Bianca gets the the clothesline out, and yeah, it was a nice sequence to end it. And I think that they picked the right person. The final three of this Women's Royal Rumble makes this for me the best women's Royal Rumble to date. This finally felt like they were over the whole, yay, we're doing it. We're actually doing it. They were out there to prove a point, to get to WrestleMania. There was so much logic in the final three with, you know, these three women have history. Charlotte is Charlotte to the point where even after they got rid of her, I'm sitting there like, she could just pull them both off the apron and then nobody wins because she's Charlotte. Like, perfect foil to have. And then the logic behind them going, no, no, let's get in the ring. Let's just calm down and get in the ring. And then uh, you have a great exchange between the right two women because this is how you do it. Because nobody going into this was expecting anybody else to win. It wasn't like, well, it's Bianca and Tamina, so I wonder who's going to Mania. No, this was perfect, because at any moment, I'm sitting there like, Rhea, Rhea can win. Rhea can win. Rhea can beat Bianca. And then Bianca just wins, and there's just immediately this feeling of like, oh my god, they did it. They built it up, and they hyped it up, and just because it made sense, they didn't swerve. They just did it. And it felt so good. And that was heightened by the amount of emotion that came out of Bianca Belair in the post-match promo where she is crying, saying, you know, I did it. I want to take my mom, my dad, my husband. Like, I'm going to WrestleMania. It felt like that's why we go to the Royal Rumble. And this was perfect. And I can say no bad things. I do think that eventually down the line, depending on what they decide to do, we might think of this a little bit differently, positively or negatively. Let me put it that way, because we don't know where it leads. You know, I mean, in the past, we've gotten like, wow, Edge won the Royal Rumble. That's going to be great. And then we go, well, that was kind of pointless. Jack Swagger's our champion, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so it might not have been the best decision depending on, you know, later on when we look back in hindsight, but at least for right now, I got nothing bad to say about the idea of Bianca Belair winning. Cause I am a huge fan of Bianca Belair. So it's like, you're going to have to prove to me later on that you made a mistake rather than at this point, me looking forward to, I told you so I don't think I'm going to be able to say that. I think that, uh, I think we got, 
if not the best option, the second best option. Yeah, I I want to say that neither Royal Rumble winner should ever pull the I don't say should ever, but not this year pull the whole. Let's go to NXT. Nope, no, no. Bianca needs to challenge Sasha Banks. Edge should stay on Raw and challenge Drew McIntyre. Spoiler, sorry. Uh, but they really, this is perfect the way we're going here. Also, I wanted to mention something with this, because uh, you said that you were disappointed that Rhea Ripley didn't win because she's on your fantasy team. You do realize that Bianca's also on your fantasy team, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he stole, you stole her from me. I think I dropped her real quick when I thought, oh, it looks like they're not going to do anything with her. You did that a couple times. You did that with uh, Sasha, too. But yeah, yeah so when, you got a when it came down to the final two, you were good either way. <laughs> I thought that I uh, didn't have Bianco in there. I thought nope. that. Wait, so who's on my team right now? <laughs> I keep losing track of this damn thing. I have too many, too many Roman, stats going Sasha, on. Sasha, Keith Lee, Drew McIntyre, Karrion Cross, Goldberg, Rhea Ripley, and Bianca Belair. Oh my God, is Tony winning in the fantasy league? Oh, that's a that's no, a sexy ass team. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you can't make up a four hundred point gap <laughs> eventually. Like you made up quite a bit of it tonight, but you haven't made up the full four hundred points yet. They better. Uh, I'm gonna keep this damn team probably in the time. <laughs> I don't think. I, I don't think it's a good idea to keep Goldberg now. Oh, Goldberg. Yeah, really. no, he's going. Yeah. And we don't, And also, Keith Lee's lost you ten. He's gonna lose you ten points this week because he's got COVID. So that's like that's 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 been a little bit of a harsh day. Yeah. Oh, Keith Lee. Uh, he might be number two. I don't know. But uh, I I didn't think I had Bel Air. So yay! Look at this team. This is a good looking uh, group of people too. And good looking uh, mango tree. Yeah. Yeah, the the mangoes don't kneel, <laughs> even if they're second place. And we got a new twenty four seven champion because Peter Rosenberg won. And you know what? I know people are gonna crap all over this. I like it. I think that you know what the belt doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Give it to somebody who like this is a highlight of his career. You yeah, know? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Sir. So, but it's it's kind of like in that state of mind where I think like it doesn't matter. So there's no harm in doing it, but it also doesn't matter. So don't do it. Or just don't have that title. Just abolish the belt for yeah, the just, love just, of fuck. Like, just abolish. have truth just constantly hold it. I don't mind like him having it because he does something fun with it. But I know he has to lose it to make it fun. But they don't actually do anything interesting with that title. So I do want to highlight our truth going. Oh my god, it's crazy. I've seen Bugs Bunny. I've seen foxes. They should call this the Royal Farms Rumble. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Jesus, he's so good. <laughs> and then that took us into the last man standing match for the Universal Championship. Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns. To be honest, for the first couple minutes of this, I was more concerned with Royal Rumble statistics because I was just updating 100 things. And I don't think I missed much because by the time I got around to looking at things, they were battling around the screens. And then that was when they were actually using weapons and everything. But we had some good things here and there. Nothing great. I mean, actually, we got the Sammy Guevara cart spot where uh, Kevin Owens got ran over by uh, Roman Reigns. We got a senton off the forklift. It was, it was good. You know, certainly nothing I could fucking do. And... I like that they did like the spear through the screen, not as the finish, because in some other worse last man standings, that would have just been like, all right, that's good enough. Then that's the end of it. But here's the problem. <laughs> they set up a whole thing with the handcuffs. And the idea in mind was Roman Reigns is handcuffed low enough that he can't possibly get up. Which, lo and behold, Roman Reigns was low enough that he couldn't get up. <laughs> And they did a. Th the first part of this was good. Roman Reigns is handcuffed. He cannot possibly get up. So when we get to nine, he pulls the referee, knocks him out because he's like, that way you can't count anymore. But then they decided to go along with the idea that Paul Heyman would be able to take the handcuffs off in time for another referee to start counting. And they couldn't get it off in time. So they were like, you know, five, six. And it's like, uh, <laughs> why are you not counting anymore? Why is it cutting away to a different camera angle? And about a minute later, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Roman Reigns got up. 
yeah, it's it's kind of like one of those things that can only happen while live and stuff like that. But I think something there's a lesson they need to learn from this, which also, which the fact is you don't actually have to use real handcuffs and put Roman Reigns and Tyro to think because Roman Reigns knows what the spot is and knows that he will stay down whether it's real handcuffs or not. Because at the end of the day, the, the, the thing they could have done is, well, let's have a fake pair of handcuffs. So if this goes wrong, Roman can just rip the ha- handcuffs and like stand up for it. Because first of all, that would look like badass as hell. But secondly, it's like it you kind of have to foolproof these things. Yeah. And if if Paul Heyman can't get the key out in time, like cause he looked like he was going for the for the handcuff that was tied around the the bar first of all we couldn't get that one so then he went for the hand but he couldn't do that one in time as well so it's just it's like it's like life is like flashing but <laughs> like all of your eyes at this point especially um romans and paul Heyman's because just like go, oh my god this is just so like so unbelievably embarrassing <laughs> like we can't get these handcuffs off and we need to finish the match immediately afterwards it's like and it's not like a, a count out there type of thing where they could go oh, okay well we'll just do a count out and he retains the title then we can figure it out another time like no that means that kevin owens is your champion yeah yeah and the issue is that roman then had to show that he could stand up in the situation that he was in anyway just to make sure that he could get like just in case the referee did start decide to start counting sheep wise yeah. and stuff like that that he can just be on his feet and so that ruins the first spot in the first place because roman clearly could get on his feet in that situation <laughs> but uh yeah it, that it was, ruined that... everything Oh, yeah, that was a real um, a real dampener of the final thing. I don't think it ruined everything. I thought this match was a lot of fun. Uh, last Man Standing matches are always hindered by the fact that it's a Last Man Standing match anyway, and that's always got some sort of um, handicap to it because you're always waiting for the referee to count and stuff like that. But I think they did a lot of like fun spots, and like it was showed a lot of guts between the two of them. They made uh, Kevin Owens look like like a, a complete and total warrior for getting out of these situations. The golf cart spot is as good, if not better, than the AEW one. The AEW one I, I really love because it's you can see it coming from a mile away and it builds and it builds to the thing where Sammy Guevara hits. This one came out of shot of nowhere. It was like a freight train just hitting Kevin Owens. And that's like so they're different in that regards, but they obviously have very similar like similarities in the fact they're both golf carts, but I found them both to be absolutely hilarious. And you have Kevin Owens do a lot of diving through tables. That was cool spots, some cool spots as well. So yeah, I think they added a lot of cool things. The one thing I took away from this, outside of the obviously the really botched finish, is that I think this should have been them. I think this should have been the Mania feud. It feels like it was misplaced. And if they wouldn't like, have done the whole thing at TLC and stuff, they could have gotten away with doing this for Mania. Yeah, well, yeah just I feel like they heated up Kevin Owens too quickly. Like Kevin Owens, this Kevin Owens, who's like fighting for his family and like is like basically taking the most unbelievable ungodly abuse from Roman Reigns and is still trying to get into his feet and still withstanding all of it, would have been a perfect babyface challenger for Roman for WrestleMania. Now I feel like everything under that is going to be a bit of a a, a, a bit of a step below because oh, spoilers for obviously what happens in the Royal Rumble. I don't think we're getting the Bryan match because of no. what happens in the Rumble, and we'll talk about that. And so I don't know who Roman faces now that is really at the level that Owens was being built up as a babyface for this one. So I'm a little unsure about that side of things now. That's where I think we'll get into the Royal Rumble. But Yeah, I don't have much to say about this, because I agree with what Callum has said in terms of main roster nobody else being as ready as Kevin Owens. But that being said, through no fault of his own, I was not invested in this match at all because it was a foregone conclusion. Yeah, there was absolutely no way that Kevin Owens was going to win this unless he didn't uh, unhook the handcuffs in time. (laughs) So it's one of those, like, yeah, it's, it's not as good as maybe what they could have done if they were given this match at Mania. But I didn't think, hey, I got to look at all these crazy spots. I just thought, okay, when is the bell going to ring? Because we know Roman is going over. Then we moved on to the 30-man Royal Rumble match. And oddly enough, for some reason, the Wikipedia page right now 
People have all the numbers for the men's match, but not the women's. Hmm. Strange. Thanks, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of feels you. like that. Yeah. Thank that's you. that's exactly I, what I was thinking, and I I was like, I don't know if I really want to go down that, other than to just say it's strange. But I yeah. Think, but since Callum opened that door, yeah, that's absolutely what it is, which is a damn shame because it, honestly, the women's match was booked better, but I guess people and it was longer as well. Friends. Longer of the two rumble matches. Oh, well. we didn't talk about this. Maybe I'm the only one that noticed or cared. Uh, they were really fucking with the Titan time tonight. Uh, I know like, Dallas in our they, uh, for yeah. Smart Combo, he was counting some of these, and it was like so uh, fifty a six seconds. Gap and... between one entrant coming in, wasn't there something like that? Six something. minutes. I mean, not six minutes. It was like I can't remember what I saw. Like Dallas, Dallas. Some of them minutes. were like twenty seconds, though. Like some of them were like, okay, Charlotte just hit the ring, and the clock is going. You oh know, yeah, it's clearly they were going by the times, like just the the incident that happened before yeah. anything else. Yeah, and it's very clear to me that because both winners are were going the distance, they were rushing the clocks so that they didn't have to go as long. But they do that all the time, though. They never do an actual ninety second, you know, interval, whatever. So to me, uh, that's just a guarantee. So, so do you want to be this? Four. Why is Edge number one? Because I'll tell you why. Because they decided that they wanted to finally have somebody, somebody else, else they can say. Yeah. Or, or multiple people have won the number one spot and only name Sean Mike. <laughs> so all three of us had that same moment where we're like, yeah, at the end of this, they're like, only three people have won. It's like, Sean Michaels did it first, and Edge is the most recent one, kind of, you know, it's like, yeah. Honestly, but, though, as that was the first wait a minute they're bothering to make that small change is he gonna win from number one i think that they did it also because they just wanted to tell the biggest possible comeback story because you can't win from a worse spot than number one or number two the biggest possible comeback story tony is randy orton's face (laughs) you know what's funny uh at the beginning of this they make a big point when, uh, cause it's Randy Orton and it's Edge for number one and number two, uh, Edge for number one, Randy Orton for number two, and Sami Zayn comes out. Total conspiracy, by the way. And Cole, I think it was, goes, "Well, number three is a bad spot. It's the worst spot that you can win from." It's like, yeah, Bianca just won from number three. <laughs> Literally, He's like, paying attention. He's half an hour cute. ago, she won from number three. <laughs> Come on, and Ric Flair won from number three, and other people have won from number one or number two. Or number three. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's like it's, just that, like it's the worst worst position you can come into the ring for. It's just like, well, there are two guys already in the ring that were there for about two minutes before this guy came out. So it's actually it's the it's the third worst position because it's number three. Now, statistically, at this point, there have been ten people to win from the number one to number ten spot. There's been seven to win from the number eleven to number twenty. So statistically, you're better off if you get the number one spot or the number two spot or the number three spot than you are to get, say, number 12. Yeah, because those, so, those spots are the narrative spots. Right. So they Those's should stop saying that. Bumps, like, that's when you get your like middle of the road nobodies coming in. But they have been over the course of these past few years, because I've been tracking this since uh, it wasn't 2007 when I started. 2007 was when I went back and started doing um, some other things, like to 2007. But maybe it would have been like 2010 is when I started, uh, actually, or maybe 2009, actually. Anyway, point being, I've been keeping track of this for a while. And for the longest time, they just had nobody from the middle range. And in the past couple of years, they've been adding more. You know, Shinsuke won from number 14. Uh, Rollins won from number 10. Charlotte from 17. McIntyre from 16. So they've maybe somebody backstage was like, you know, we don't really have anybody win from that middle spots. Let's do that. But we're at a point now where, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's kind of funny because it's kind of like statistically the worst thing to win from is one that's won three different times, <laughs> you know, kind of, or two different times. And so uh, I think number one and number 30, once again, had the same number of winners because they each have three. Number two and number three each have two winners each now. So we're getting there to where it's like it's not that bad of a spot to win from. Yeah, and I I've got 
numbers if you adjust it by inflation because of the number of people in the Royal Rumble is different. And I think I said before, we'll get more information about some of the other statistics later on. Just just check the website, everybody. Like I'm, I'm going to update it as soon. Everything's mostly updated at this point, except for the cumulative times. But we got uh, Sami Zayn in there. We got uh, Mustafa Ali. We got Jeff Hardy, who really did not like a damn thing. Got eliminated pretty quickly by Dolph Ziggler. Shinsuke Nakamura. And our first real surprise of the whole night, Carlito at number eight. He looked fucking he looked great. Fuck, he looked fucking awesome. Like, he is going to get such a comeback run. He better. He I always liked Carlito, and he so looks fantastic. Great. So, you know, he, very cool. That's the, sort, that's the sort of body of someone who has finally found some motivation. Yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was the thing that always held him back beforehand, is the fact that he had all the talent in the world but was, well, supposedly lazy. That's the whole story behind that Ric Flair promo that he cut on him all those years ago, so... Maybe it's yeah, proof that awesome. uh, an apple a day. <laughs> it's just <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I had to. Although, although he may not have kept the doctor away, but the doctor might have been carrying a certain substance in the ne- needles. That it was... <laughs> I mean, I'm just speculating. <laughs> I, I was I was saddened by the, you know, now that he said apple, that we didn't see the apple bit, and then I just realized. As he said, Apple a day keeps the doctor away. Why we didn't see him spit Apple yeah. <laughs> in somebody's face? I, I forget where I had seen it. Somewhere along the lines, I had seen somebody say, uh, Keith Lee should come in at number 30 with a shirt that says, I have COVID and everybody eliminates themselves. <laughs> and I was like, God damn, if they do that, that'll be the craziest <laughs> possible ending to the Royal Rumble. <laughs> He slowly walks to the ring and everybody's like, nope, fucking out. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Yeah, I did not anticipate the, the Carlito. Well, I didn't anticipate the Carlito spot to begin with. I didn't think that he would be a part of it. And then uh, once he got the apple, I was just like, yeah, he's not going to spit in Shinsuke's face. <laughs> That'd be a little bit weird. I like that Shinsuke is in his gear, I guess. Nice well, baby face. Now he can dress like a baby face, I guess. I don't know. And now he can show his skin? Yeah. Um, Ricochet, uh, that's in my next note. Uh, he gets in there after Woods and Biggie and Morrison, even though the fact that Ricochet didn't beat AJ Styles. But like we said before, maybe he's just covering for Jey Uso or whoever. Well, Elias. you gotta talk about New Day and their gear because they had Brody Lee gear and it was awesome. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't notice it. I was Brody Lee. typing a bunch of shit at the time. Yeah, that was, even yeah, better. That was a great tribute. I'll have to go back and check that out too. Uh, Elias came out. Then we got our, our one and only uh, NXT person for this match, at the very least, Damian Priest, which we all kind of thought was happening, and I'm glad did. He did a good yeah, run for this. Yeah, I assume he won't be NXT as of tomorrow night. So. Yeah. Where do you guys uh, uh, rather see him go? Uh, he needs to go to Raw. I yeah, because he can't go to SmackDown because then he's essentially because they already have Corbin. It's like, <laughs> like Raw could say, oh, we have the better. It was like when they came in the ring and they were in the ring at the same time. So thinking, wow, Corbin is in the ring with the guy who is better than him in every single capacity. <laughs> Just like, this is the guy they should have signed all those years ago. Uh, Priest and Ripley, even though Ripley wasn't the only NXT, she was the main one. Came from the same spot, number 14. I thought that was interesting. Huh. Well, Both get the uh, most eliminations, although obviously Priest ones was tied. So there's some parallels there. I, I really dug that they gave him some good stuff to do here. Because I like Priest. Yeah, you know, he grew on me pretty quickly. He started out, and I'm like, eh, maybe he's got something. And then over the past year, I've been like, you know what? I actually really like Priest. I want him to be like something. And he's not the youngest person in NXT. So bump him up, move him up to Raw or SmackDown, give him something pretty decent. I'm totally, totally 100% down on that. We eventually had the uh, Miz come out. And we did the whole thing with Miz and Bad Bunny and Priest eliminates uh, Miz and John Morrison and Bad Bunny does a crossbody off the ropes. Yeah, Nitty Cool is a back leg while flying yeah. off from there, so it's just like, a, managed to get it off. Obviously better than some indie workers, but those are really bad indie workers. So. Um, Total swerve. I thought we were definitely getting Booker T. Me too. And yeah, we didn't. But Booker T probably would have just stood there and not done anything. So <laughs> He would have done a spin rooney at some point. Uh, we have Riddle, we had Daniel Bryan, and... 
Good. We mentioned Riddle was fucking awesome in this match. Riddle got some time to shine. Yeah. This this is this is the riddle that I want to see. I don't want to see this fucking dope head that has absolutely no sense of like ha- has basically no sense of intelligence or anything in like backstage segments of Raw. I want the fucking killer in the ring that can like that does all the MMA stuff and does some awesome transitions with Daniel Bryan and stuff like that. That's the riddle I want to see. I don't want to see like essentially um I'm trying to think Every what's day. that guy's <laughs> name from a. No, what well, that, that guy's name from uh, Waterworld and not Waterworld, uh, Biodome and stuff like that. Polly Shore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's you don't want to see a squirrel. <laughs> Polly Shore. He's just Polly Shore with the abs. Right now. You know, one of these days we're gonna have to do a fanboys thing, and we're gonna have to watch like Son in Law. No, we don't. <laughs> just to get your reaction out of it. Yeah. <laughs> to be like you know uh if you want to uh, make sure that uh callum checks out no, biodome you have to pay 100, you have to pay 100 <laughs> <laughs> i just like biodome back in the day um matt riddle did eliminate himself almost though he jumped over the top rope yeah yeah so was, uh... <laughs> it's a dunce moment yeah that was, that was a dumb one a dumb spot but we're trying to talk about that one at least at least for the most part about 99 percent of this match he was really good and they needed one stupid thing and that's what a lot of people are going to remember about him and we had dan o'brien uh we had a reunion of team hell no because kane popped back up and at this point i had already adjusted one of the statistics because i was like all right well they mentioned earlier Dolph ziggler has the second most amount of appearances and Kane's not going to come in here, so let me just adjust that a little bit. Then Kane shows up, and I'm like, all right, god damn it. But I'm like, great, you know, Kane has now more time for the Royal Rumbles. He is another appearance, which is at 18 for the Kane character. And he's got one more for Fake Diesel and another one for Isaac Yankum. So he has been a part of 20 Royal Rumbles. That's, yes. that's insane. Um, I gotta say, Kane is the reason they have Pyro. And they're so much better with Pyro. And hearing the fire go off was so much cooler than just, oh, everything is red and his music is playing. And Kane now, by the way, has, depending on if you count the one Royal Rumble when uh, the elimination that he got with Isaac Yankum, sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. He either has 45 or 46 total eliminations. Yeah, with the, which the is the most. He got this one. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see him get to fifty. I'll be uh, I'll be calculating some more of those a little bit later on. I'm pretty sure the only adjustments this time around are um, Braun Strowman and Edge. Uh, Braun Strowman got how many of them? Four. Four. Three. Yeah. Three or four. No, I'm forgetting. Four. Four. Uh, so Braun Strowman then is at thirty-four total eliminations, which puts him. Above Triple H, above Roman Reigns, above Big Show, and just narrowly behind Stone Cold. And Edge is at 23, so he's in the exact same spot that he was at before. Um, I'm going to double check some of these numbers a little bit later on, but right now, if my numbers are correct, Kane is at the top, then it's Undertaker, then Michaels, then Austin, then Strowman, Big Show, Roman Reigns, Triple H, Hogan and Orton, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, and Edge are like the top 10. Um, so we got that. Uh, Kane, cool. Always like seeing Kane. King Corbin comes out, and then Otis, and Otis is pretty promptly out. He apparently only lasted fifty-four seconds. That's yeah. ridiculous. But and, yeah, like, he did a lot in those fifty-four seconds. I mean, I, I know it's, it's it's more in the grand scheme of things, but when Corbin eliminated Shinsuke Nakamura, it felt like I got kicked right in the nuts. Yeah, me I too. don't know why, because I knew she was going to come over wasn't going to win. It was, just, it was just the fact it was Corbin. It was Corbin, Corbin eliminated. eliminated. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah. was like, oh, God, why you? Yeah, same thing with Otis. <laughs> like, Corbin it's always Corbin. Like, Corbin has the absolute reputation for just being the guy who you just who does the thing that you don't want him to do <laughs> in any situation. <laughs> Corbin well, yeah. eliminated uh, Riddle last year when everybody was still gung-ho about Riddle. And it was like, come on. Well, you know my uh, propensity for cheering on the assholes. Asshole, I love when yeah. Ray, I love when King Corbin does that kind of stuff. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> like, he around. Yeah, you know, pick him up and toss him or whatever. He got eliminated though by Dominic, who promptly yeah. got tossed out by Bobby Lashley afterward. I and I'm think like, that's one of the biggest mistakes. They didn't save Dominic 
for some time with Ray. Yeah, not at all Ray involved in that. And to me, Ray didn't do anything at all that dictated that he needed to come a couple spots later. Ray could have been in like Ricochet's spot and they could have done something, anything together. Because uh, well, Ray in a promo or not promo, um, an interview the bump. was the bump. Yeah. Where he said, I'll give him one pass. I'll try to save him once. And then he's on his own. And I'm like, you know what? I want, that was one of the stories I actually was interested in was, are we going to get like Dominic accidentally eliminates Ray or Ray dumps out Dominic and just goes, Hey son, it's every man for himself. I'm teaching you a lesson or something. You know what I mean? Like that could have been interesting because we've never gotten a father and son duo in a Royal Rumble match before, if I remember correctly. Correct. We got a grandmother this year. That's crazy. No, but right. to be fair, at least that elimination from Lashley on Dominic was a, a fairly memorable one. <laughs> Just... he got him miles in the air, <laughs> dropping him down. Total Everything yeet. Lashley did <laughs> felt important in this match. I loved his exchange with Big E. He was great. Should have been the match with Survivor Series. I don't know how we didn't get to Big E sooner. So after Bobby Lashley comes out, we get a change to the weather report because I don't know about you guys. I got some snow today. Turns uh, out, at least where they're at, there's a hurricane coming through. It was so good. Just, <laughs> just an absolute. Well, it was a retread of the, uh, the yeah. spot from uh, the Royal Rumble 2002, where it's Austin and uh, Triple H throwing him out. But it's this time they did it with uh, Lashley and Big E, which was cool. Um, not so cool with the fact that Hurricane basically tore his leg almost. It seemed like falling out of the ring, which, yeah. was, uh, which wasn't as cool. I mean, you got two guys that probably legitimately don't know their own strength. But yeah, scary moment. So. Uh, Hurricane was on an AEW show not that long ago. I know. He's like, I think they they saw some stats recently. It's that uh, Hurricane, over the course of his career, has been in, has appeared on TV for WCW, WWE, TNA, um, ECW, think, technically. I, I guess if you, ECW, WWE, yeah, on account of that side of things. Um, I, I believe he was on, um, he's been in AEW now. I believe he might have even been on like some weird episode of, like Lucha Underground or something like that, or maybe like some other like indie, indie promotion type thing. But yeah, he's, he's gone around basically every single, every time there's a new promotion on TV, there's a good chance that Hurricane is going to appear at some point. Yeah, it's crazy, and uh, I like that when they do that kind of stuff. But even more so, I like that number 24 came out, and it's fucking Christian. That I, me. I yeah. was on camera for this, and I, like, screamed, and I had to compose myself because it's fucking Christian, guys. Whereas Todd Christian would say, it's Christian. It's like, <laughs> I, I told Christian could fuck off because this is awesome. It deserved a bigger react. It would deserve a bigger reaction than that. To, to the point where, like, okay, look, am I in love with the idea that everybody that we had at the final five or six is a well-established older name? No. But this was so fucking cool to look around and see Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Christian, three guys who were at risk of permanent damage if they ever took a bump and had to quietly, or in Edge's case, not so quietly, re retire, get the chance to just do what they love to do. And Christian looked great. Him and Edge, they age very, very well. Like, it's not... Like a Tory, where it's like, wow, you haven't aged a day. They show their age, but they still look so much like themselves. And it's just a great transition. And there's a moment in this, uh, right after he comes in, where Edge hugs Christian with tears in his eyes. And it's like, that's what wrestling is, man. Wrestling is emotion. And this is so fucking good. Yeah, before they even did the hug, they showed Edge laying down in the ring, and you could tell that he's already welling up. Yeah. And that I was, was just like, that got me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, this is so, like, I don't care if Christian's in there for five seconds and gets eliminated. The fact that he can step back in there 
means so much because that guy, same as a lot of other people, you know, you mentioned Daniel Bryan, you mentioned Edge. When the people have to relinquish their career well into, you know, like a Ric Flair type where it's like, all right, you you could have retired for 30 years type of a thing. And you're going to wrestle your one last match and then another last match and another last match. Terry Funk's been wrestling last matches for like before I was born, you know, Um, that's a different type of story. But when somebody gets where it's like, crap, I still could have gone for a couple more years and I didn't get a chance to do a good send off type of thing and I deserve it, but I can't. And they can come back and they can do something like this. When Christian popped up, the immediate thought that I had was, and this is a weird thing uh, thing to think, but I was like, oh my God, I kind of hope that Edge doesn't win the Royal Rumble now. And I went Edge and Christian at WrestleMania. That was... So... Well, I, don't, I didn't want Edge and Christian at WrestleMania. I wanted Edge and Christian teaming together at WrestleMania and win the tag titles. Something like that, it. though. But I mean, like, you know, something yeah. involving with oh, Edge no. and Christian. Maybe yeah. not necessarily against each other, but even against each other. If they were to do that, I'd be like, all right, you know. But like... If... If they had better tag teams, I'd be here for it. But with the tag team scene the way that it is, my yeah. immediate thought, once I saw him in his gear, I was like, oh my god, Christian's going to eliminate Edge. And they're going to have that WrestleMania match they were supposed to have 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I was like, ah. But even better almost, they didn't, they didn't fight. And I like that. You know? I mean, go ahead. In some sort of perspective, when you and again, I don't want to be a downer on this side of things because it was an awesome moment with Christian returning and the re- reuniting with Edge. It does say something that a guy like Christian, with all respect in the world, he was a great worker, former world champion, but is a guy who is kind of like below the upper echelon of like the top stars of the Attitude Era and the Ruthless Aggression Era. And now he's looked at like a god because yeah, and he comes back. Sucks. He comes back, and he's a bigger star than ninety-five percent of the people that were in this match. Mm-hmm. It does go some way of saying, yeah, this company does n- hasn't created a new star in about twenty years. I felt that. I think I got over that about what was it? Geez, five years ago now, when we turned around and they gave us Shane and Taker at Mania, and it was just sort of like, all right. That's that's acceptable because Shane is a bigger star than anybody they have. So I've been numb to that for a while, but I, I see what you're saying, and you are correct. But see, though, I would argue Hurricane and Carlito didn't get the same sort of response, and neither of them were world champions. Carlito got a huge response. I Carlito think, I think he would have got great. a huge response if there had been a crowd there. Yeah. Hurricane, not so much, because he knows a bit of a comedy character, but Carlito would have gotten a big response. Cause I'm not talking about pure company. response. I'm talking about the whole being more over and being a bigger star than the, the people like no, to me big, carlito big. didn't seem like a bigger star than somebody like seth rollins he felt bigger than elias who limited him but see that's like carlito has had more success than elias Could elias hasn't it. hasn't won a single championship except for the 24 7 title carlito's but a granted. multi-time other champion but one of the things that kept coming up in the live stream i was doing was you know, even Seth Rollins is kind of old news at this point. I understand what you're saying, but it's still sort of like, damn, is there literally nobody new in the last eight years, let alone the last 20? I'd say one thing, Collie, I feel like a bigger deal than the guy holding the money in the bank briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> but like, Carlito came out after Shinsuke, and Shinsuke is not a former world champion. He did win the Royal Rumble, and he won the United States and the uh, intercontinental championship. And I was like, you know, Carlito's on the same kind of range as that. Like, which is a detriment to the way they built Nakamura. but That's okay. Yeah. I mean, he could have been better off, but like, I didn't look at that as like, Oh, Carlito's here and he completely overshadows the other people. And the same with hurricane, but with Christian, it's a monumental return. He's a former world champion, two time, three time, two time, -time, -time, champion, right? Yeah. Two time world champion, but two, very short reigns and he hasn't yeah. won it because Edge got injured. So it's kind of like not to, again, not to take anything away from him to extent, but in WWE's eyes he's always been an upper mid carder. Yeah. And he's never <sighs> been the same kind of level that Edge has been. There's just no arguments about it. I mean you're gonna find your detractors for Edge. I just 
somebody on an early podcast I did here was like, oh, I consider Edge to be of the Coco Beware level of Hall of Fame. I don't remember who, but... Oh, they're ridiculous, whoever they said that Yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> That's like, just insane. But I... I'm just glad to see Christian. I'm glad he got to do it. I want to see Edge and Christian have a full, like, run. I'm really... I, We were desperately needing stars. And if Edge is the best we've got, then fucking give it to him. I know he's 47. I don't care. He wrestled 58 minutes and did just fine. And at like this point, I... Like for love. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, still, you know. Uh, but, but, like... I think Kevin Owens would have laid down for a lot of it. Well, Kevin Owens laid down a lot in the match, but that's kind of the idea of a last man standing match. Anyway, <laughs> I, so. I mean, I, you know what I mean. Oh, I love, by the way, uh, this is another trend that I've noticed, kind of like how I noticed before that Bob Holly always goes after Shawn Michaels. Uh, JBL takes every opportunity he can to mention Road Dog laying down and grabbing the ropes. <laughs> Anytime he talks about the Royal Rumble, he's like, oh, I remember this one time where <laughs> Road Dog did that. So it must really get under his skin that he did that. But, um, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I want uh, Christian versus Orton maybe at WrestleMania instead of Bray Wyatt versus Orton or whatever. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, Styles came out uh, throughout he the night. for Christian, and that warmed my little TNA loving heart. Yeah. That's, I loved Wait, it. Sweet, sweet. We haven't actually mentioned the fact that Orton got taken out of the match. Oh, yeah. They, they fought in the beginning, and it was really good. And then he, what, he hit him in the leg? Yeah, he the made a chair. Steel chair. And they and... fucking panned to it like a million times as he's walking to the back. Yeah, so they take Orton out to the back. So he basically spends about 90% of the match in the trainer's room. And they even cut at one point to Orton getting a nice pack on his leg, thinking that's like a bigger deal than anything that's actually going on in the match. Yeah, not a fan of that. I, w- I was disappointed with this. Because, again, I, I feel like Orton can go the whole rumble if you wanted to and also as much as like i'm totally cool with it because the wyatt thing has gotten a little too goofy it totally just felt like the minute they said edris zorton like we reverted back to june for randy and the bray wyatt thing just it was okay we don't need, need to touch it you know and but I'm, if that means that they don't do any more of it i'm fine with that it's not it's the best so way of exactly. doing it but at the same time just do it, you know, like if the alternative is to continue on with a bad story just to get to a conclusion, I'm fine with them just being like, well, eh, move on. But I don't think like that's the can, case. Well, it's not like they can continue with the Edge and Orton thing now because Edge has another opponent now and they're not giving yeah. Orton the world title now between now and WrestleMania. So. They might. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll, we'll talk about this. Um, So Styles is in there and. Uh, we got four different pronunciations of his uh, associate right in a row by the same two people. <laughs> it was Amas, Omos, Omas, and Amos. And I'm like, God damn it, pick something. Like, just any of them. Pick one of them. <laughs> Imagine if they would have done this with everybody else. If they're just sort of like, there's Damien Priest, and there's Demayan Priest. And whatever, it's just like knock it off. Is he Omos? Is he Omas? Is he Amos? Pick one and stick with it. You've had three months now. <laughs> you know, just do it. God damn it. By this point, Naomi should have figured out something else, and they should have figured out how to pronounce O M O S. But he, I'm gonna call him Amos because that's the one that they've been saying more often. Amos eliminated a couple different people here. One of my favorite ones was how he eliminated Big E, which he just grabbed him. It's just like fuck you, you're out of here. This like is that. a weird, like, video game moment where it's like, don't go near the outer of... Don't yeah. go with, near within grabbing distance of Amas because <laughs> he will just chuck you. Yeah. And my issue with the Big E one is, why? You're not going to do anything with Styles because they're on different shows. What was the point of that? Yeah, he kind of uh, interacted more with people that were on Raw than on SmackDown. He had that whole, like, Thing with Bobby Lashley and uh, yeah, so backing up Woods and Mustafa Ali, and I think that's because they just don't know what to do for SmackDown. So, do you think that this it's possible we can get Biggie and Roman if uh, no. Brian's gonna no. be preoccupied with the Royal Rumble in the year? No, nope, I don't think so. I think that 
Big E was just let's give him something to do here, and I think we have no plans. To, I wanted they wanted to find a way to eliminate him that would get heat on Omos or Omas or whoever whoever we're calling him. But I I kind of find it funny the fact that AJ Styles was in the ring for as long as he was, and it's actually his associate that wasn't even in the match that got his two got two eliminations, and AJ Styles didn't get any. Yeah. I like how Styles is eliminated too. It was, uh, so Bradstrom and Ray Mysterio, Sheamus comes out, Cesaro comes out, Seth Rollins comes out. I'm gonna go back to the Cesaro and Sheamus thing, but uh, Braun Strowman comes out at number thirty, and Braun Strowman's way of eliminating AJ Styles is funny because he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna toss you out." Oh, Amos is there. That ah, final three on the other spot where Amos is, and then I was like, "All right, that's so, smart." You know. So I immediately saw that and thought, "Okay, we're either getting AJ against Braun Strowman at WrestleMania, or we're getting..." Amas against Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. Yeah, I think we might be getting either a tag team match or just Strowman yeah, versus Braun Amas. Strowman and the Andre. We're not getting a match between AJ Styles and Braun Strowman. Maybe tomorrow, but they're not going to do it in three months. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Braun and somebody against AJ and Amas. Why, why do you guys like to pitch the worst ideas? Do you, why? Oh, I can pitch much worse think, ideas than that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I could think of a lot of worse things to do uh, than that match. I Braun mean, Strowman against Jackson Riker, and the winner wins. Uh, Elias getting hit in the head with a. Uh, yeah, Rob. Riddle. Do you really want Braun Strowman to be in a significant match at WrestleMania? No, I don't. Yeah, exactly. But I don't want him to get. I want AJ in a significant match at WrestleMania. We well, could be. You just have Omos just have the match with Braun Strowman in a different capacity. I do care that. I still like Strowman, but yeah. I I no Strowman is dead for me. So uh, one of the other little moments that I liked in this was Cesaro, uh, Sheamus is out and Cesaro comes out and they're like, oh, is this going to be a reunion of the bar? And he's like, nope, every man for himself. And then the next person comes out and it's Seth Rollins and Cesaro goes after him and Seth Rollins goes, you're my friend. <laughs> I like that. Cesaro is just kind of like, fuck everybody who I'm friends with <laughs> for some reason. I mean, when, was, when was Seth and Cesaro friends? They've always been friends. In the real, in the real life. Yeah. That's not, that doesn't count. That's not like <laughs> not that's not a story associated thing. Yeah, that, that, like I can imagine it being Seth Rollins doing that because he thinks that he's friends with everybody because he's a messiah gimmick. So that's fine. But the fact that he's just like, oh no, we're friends. Just like, are you? I've never seen you be friendly or anything like that. So if I don't see it, I you can't tell that story immediately. Well, that's why go. you got to watch those WWE Network specials because everything right. has to be watched. Those Peacock specials, you mean? Well, in a couple of months. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I gotta say they missed a huge chance to just play burn it down and kill the messiah gimmick they've done a good job with that I haven't seen a Liam Mysterio anywhere so they've done a good job in killing things that weren't working and you know I still get him confused with Bailey when that music hits me too every time I'm like, oh, I legit shit, thought Bailey. Bailey's in this what the fuck <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, having Seth Rollins back is, has to be a good thing. I mean, he'll probably have some sort of significant match at yeah, probably against the guy that he eliminated from this match. Which yeah, he Daniel took Bryan. out Daniel Bryan. And you yeah, know what? You knew- I'm, I'm kind of annoyed about that. Not just because I thought that Daniel Bryan would win and that, you know, Fantasy League name type of thing. But I legitimately, for the past, I don't know how many years, I kept having Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins as this like a year in advance type of thing for WrestleMania. And every year it came around to me going, Oh, well that's just not going to happen. And this year <laughs> I didn't put down Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins. And now I'm like, damn it. You waited until I didn't fucking do it. <laughs> like, So Seth was cheeky in that he got out of the ring in a way. Obviously he wasn't eliminated and he was just kind of stalking the guys in the ring, and I thought, okay, he has the history with Edge. He can eliminate Edge, because yes, he's on SmackDown, but they can always retcon that, because he wasn't on SmackDown for long, and just fight Edge. And as soon as he went for Brian, I went, oh my god. Not only is it Brian and Seth at Mania, but Edge is actually going to go the distance and win the Royal Rumble. As soon as Brian's feet hit the floor, I knew the ending. I admittedly got very nervous because I was like, they still are trying to treat it as if Orton's not coming out. 
because they made it a point. They were like, it's uh, five people in the ring or whatever. Well, we should say that it's six because Seth Rollins is out in the ring. And I'm like, you should say that seven because we all know Randy Orton's coming back out. And when when it got down to it was Edge and Rollins, Mm -hmm. they're like, we're down to two. And it's like, oh, shit, Orton's going to win. I was like, they're going to fucking give it to Orton, aren't they? And then they're going to do Bray Wyatt versus Orton at WrestleMania. You got to be kidding me. Don't fucking do 2017 again. And then thankfully that was the pur- uh, purpose of that was to get people to think that so that Edge can toss out Randy Orton. And It's weird. If he would have just like, if they said, oh my God, Orton, and he threw him out, I'd have been like, okay, Orton wins. But as soon as he hit the RKL, I said, all right, I know what they're doing. He's going to try to toss him and get reversed. So yeah, Edge wins from the number one spot. At Beautiful. 58 minutes and 30 seconds. Beautiful. And I... Listen, guys, COVID is real. I don't want to go to WrestleMania. I'm, I'm in a pandemic. <laughs> but, like, Edge and Bianca have won the Royal Rumble. I think I might have to go. Yeah, that would be dumb like that. I mean, I well, thank you, Cal. <laughs> but... These are two very good Royal Rumble wins. Look, you can buy like 30 seats and make sure that there's not a single person sitting around you. <laughs> you can. This is an option. And uh, at no point stand in line. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought the, um, the finish was pretty um, exciting just because I, I like the fact they actually ended it pretty once they got down to the final five. Obviously, with Orton being on the outside, things I, I like the fact they ended it quite quickly after that. Like, you don't always need to have the epic grand finale type thing. I think the fact that they eliminated Strowman and Christian at the same time, then Rollins was pretty much out immediately, and then Orton was out pretty much immediately. I think that actually works better than having a a big long grandstand finale. I mean, you already had that with the real yeah. the Unka match. You didn't need it for this one as well. Yeah, the fact that they did it with the women, do something different for the men's. And vice versa for other years, too. Like, sometimes they should do, you know, 15 people go eliminated super quick in the women's or something, depending on what the circumstances are. Mm. Yeah, so now we have three people to win from number one. One of them, Shawn Michaels. One of them, we don't want to talk about that. One and the other one, yeah. One yeah. <laughs> and the other one being Edge. So now they can, in the future, say three people have won from the number one spot. Shawn Michaels was the first to ever do it. Edge did it in you know, 2021. And then the next and, uh, statistic is, <laughs> you know. I mean, they'll be, they'll be vaguer than that. They'll say that several people have won from the number one spot. And so Including a Canadian. Yeah. Edge. <laughs> oh, you know what they could say? Uh, only a few people have won from the number one spot, including Hall of Famers Shawn Michaels and Edge. And Edge, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then they could go number three, though. Nobody fucking wins from that, except for the couple of people that did. <laughs> except for Ric Flair, Dragon Ball, and yeah. and then uh, Rey Mysterio's got that number two spot, and you know, Vince. McMahon has that one. Yeah. Uh, nobody won from number oh. four. All right. Really? I don't think so. Let me, Why would I got anyone the... ever win from number four? It's like that's like I don't think I think that's a number that's never ever gonna have a Royal Rumble win. Now, Austin won from five. I just, I, just feel like the number, I just feel like the number four is just uh, it's just an odd one because like it's the the second one after like you've had the first two and then you have the number three and number three is like slightly in- interesting. It's the first person to come out that hasn't started the match. And number four just feels like it's always the like an also ran guy after that. Yeah, we got uh, Austin at 5 in 97, and we got Orton at 8 in 2009. Oddball type of stuff. Mm. Of course, most of them came out in the 20s or so. I'm really kind of hoping that they do another 27. I like the idea that 27 is like the lucky number. The lucky and number. They haven't yeah, done a 27? 20, yeah, 21 years it will be. <laughs> no way. Yeah, 2001. Yeah, the last one, the one it was um, Austin in 2001. I thought Batista won from the number. No, he won, uh, no he's won both his rumbles from 28. Yeah, he's the only wow. person to win from the same spot. And uh, Becky won from 28. And we got uh, 29 with Edge. We got 38 from Del Rio. 29 from Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And 23 from Randy Orton. You know, 22 from Sheamus, etc. So we're getting uh, Edge challenging for one of these championships, which means it's most likely either Edge 
versus Drew McIntyre or Edge versus Roman Reigns in case something else happens that's weird, you know, COVID or an injury or they have some bonkers fucking idea where they're going to like, you know, change titles around or something. But I would assume at this point, of course, Bianca Belair is probably going to challenge Sasha Banks. She might not have to, but it makes the most sense. Yeah. The Edge one, it could really go either way. I, I could see yeah. Edge versus Drew McIntyre being their direction, but I think more so they'll probably go Edge versus Roman Reigns. And the fact that we don't have a better option for Roman is, I think, more so why that's going to be the case. Danny Bryan versus Seth Rollins, um, Edge versus Roman Reigns, and then over the course of the next two months, we've got Fastlane after Elimination Chamber, and we've got plenty of episodes of Monday Night Raw where they're going to want to pop a rating. We do some kind of a McIntyre defends the elimination uh, defends the title in the Elimination Chamber, or a number one contender is declared if Edge comes out on Raw and says I'm fighting Roman, or you know I, I don't know how they're really going to do this, which is fun. As much as I would like to see Edge against Roman in the ring and Edge against Paul Heyman on the mic. I think Edge McIntyre can tell an interesting story and still uh, get the ending where Edge wins. That's the problem here is Edge doesn't beat the Tribal Chief. I don't see it. I don't think he holds it for long if he beats Roman, but I think he can beat Roman. I think there's an interesting story to be told where McIntyre slowly gets a little sour because he's going to come to a realization that his year is up and he never got the love and adulation from the crowd. And Edge can go, listen, I was around here the first time when we all thought you were going to actually be something and you fumbled the ball and you've never headlined WrestleMania in front of 20,000 people. I have. So when we get to Tampa Bay, uh, Brandon James Stadium, I've got home court and you're in my world. And there's a story to be told there as opposed to, yeah, I'm the tribal chief and I'm going to beat your ass because I just, I just don't want that for Edge. I don't know, but I guess we'll have to see where they go with it. And I just feel like the Roman thing is more convenient just because, as Tony mentioned, there's clearly no clear-cut plan in place for the Roman Reigns thing, whereas McIntyre does have the Sheamus option. And it's not the most glamorous option, but it is a clear story they could go down mm-hmm. between now and WrestleMania. But you're also selling people again. You're selling Peacock for the first time. You no, need... no one cares. No one. No, Literally no one cares. It's just like... It's just the idea that they're just going to get the same amount of people onto Peacock that they got from the WWE Network. That's not going to change anything. It's just they, they, Peacock is using WWE because it's leveraging the brand. It's not about actually having as many subscribers as they possibly get on there because they know they're not going to get any more subscribers out of the back of it. And well, they're using people are still going to go to the show anyway because it's WrestleMania and it's going to have, have fans in it, most likely. So, yeah, people are going to go anyway. So. Plus, there's the argument that you can say, well, whatever other matches that they've got can be, yeah, they got two nights of it. And if you do have John Cena pop up, John Cena in a match, that's a selling point. And you can say, like, I mentioned this before about, like, Goldberg doesn't need the championship because it's a self-defeating argument. If you say Goldberg or Brock Lesnar or John Cena or whoever, that they're bigger than the belt then you don't need them to have the belt because then the belt is already a drawing point as it is. And you can make the argument that Drew McIntyre defending the championship is like, hey, this guy's been champion for basically a year and he's got the championship belt. So don't you want to watch a championship match? Also, we got a John Cena match. Don't you want to watch these two great matches instead of being like, all right, well, John Cena's got the belt or Goldberg's got the belt or Brock Lesnar or whatever. And then... Don't you want to see that one match where that guy also has the championship? And then you go, well, what other matches are on the card? And you go, I don't know. It's Natty versus Liv. You know, like then I kind of feel like um, if you got, uh, depending on how many matches, do you remember how many matches they had last year for each night? It was like seven, I think. 
about eight or eight, eight or so. I Somewhere think. around there. Like I would I rather it was like them, sixteen on total. I'd rather them have like seven, eight out of ten type of matches than to have uh four ten out of ten. And then four uh three um two out of ten type things. Where it's just kinda I'll like grant you and everything that you guys have said is accurate. This is gonna come down to like a personal preference for me and I'm actually looking forward to Edge emphasizing what it means to be champion because I think all too often it's like, yeah, but we have all these matches that are bigger than the belt. And I'm tired of things being bigger than the belt. Oh, no, I know. I absolutely agree with that. I don't subscribe to Tony's theory that you should have like people like John Cena and Goldberg and Lesnar not in the title matches because it makes the title feel inferior. And the title should be the biggest thing in, right. every single, in every single show. But then I also go along the lines of thinking, just with my logical side of the brain, nobody is a draw nowadays except for Cena. And... and if they can get the rock back and stuff like that nobody else is a draw so it doesn't matter because people will watch wrestlemania anyway and i feel like if you have to bring in somebody else and win the championship right before wrestlemania then it clearly shows that the other people suck whereas if you at least if you at least give them the chance to be the champion going into mania then you're you're at least trying to make the argument that maybe they are a bigger star and you just aren't following along with the script, kind of. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean that is fair enough. But it's also a case of like, well, there's a reason why at WrestleMania, let's say two, 2000 or WrestleMania 15, you didn't have a Bob Backlund versus Billy Graham match. Like, you actually had stars that you could... You basically just yeah. had your entire stars. For me, it's one or the other. Like, you have... You, you don't call on Cena, you don't call on Goldberg, you don't call on Undertaker, you don't call on any of these people, and you just focus on the people that you have. Or if you're going to do that, then you might as well have those people in championship matches because they're the biggest stars anyway. Right. Or if they're going to put people over. But that depends whether you're actually going to put those people over or not. And to me, I'll be honest, I don't like the idea of Edge versus Roman or Edge versus Drew McIntyre versus uh, any of the other kind of potential scenarios. Because to me... It's better than Edge and Orton. Like, if Edge fights Roman and loses, then it just kind of feels a little, like, uh. And the Edge and McIntyre thing just paints McIntyre in a negative spot where nobody's going to want McIntyre to win. And if McIntyre does win, people are going to be mad at McIntyre. That whole, like, you know, wow, he's held the title for a year. Why don't we get it on somebody else? Now we don't want to fucking listen to this anymore. Whereas if Edge wins, then... Kind of like, all right, well, that's that's all that the McIntyre thing was building towards. Like, I don't really feel like this is the best case scenario, despite the fact that I really like the idea that Edge won, which is weird. It's just like, I mean, I wish that there was a heel that he could topple. And there if is. they turn Drew McIntyre heel, maybe that's the case. But I don't think he's beating Roman Reigns. I mean, it's just a case of with Roman Reigns. It's just he could win the title for two months, then drop it back to Roman Reigns. That's just the story they could tell. It's it's just a case of a flick of a wrist on a booking sheet, just saying Edge wins, and that's all you need it to do. It's not so, like that's not out of the realm of possibility. The man has 11 world championships yeah. because of that. Yeah, and it's just a case of... It's not necessarily saying that Roman is like is worse off for losing the title to Edge because he could lose the title to Edge because everyone's just really wants to see Edge win at WrestleMania and he gets that big win and then get that big feel-good moment. And then Roman absolutely kills him in a rematch later down the line and maybe sends Edge, like, packing for a little while, like, gets to put him on the injured list. And then you have a Roman that's defeated the beloved champion who's even more hated for it. So There's ways I, to do this stuff, and I'm really interested. Yeah. Like, every year, I'm worried that they might only have one idea in mind for WrestleMania and it might be like, all right, well, we'll figure it all out at the end of March. And I don't want that to be the case. I hope that they have plans for like the intercontinental championship and plans for the tag titles. And I don't want Oscar to be like, Oh shit, let's just get the title onto flair two weeks before WrestleMania because we don't want Oscar as champion or God forbid, like let's just have Oscar versus flair at WrestleMania or something, you know, like I don't know. I'm, 
I'm cautiously optimistic that the way that this went down and the fact that there's good stuff that happened here means that they're going in the right direction. I just don't have a lot of faith that they will. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've been burned too many times. Uh, I'm like, uh, you know, the, the dog that's like, people are like, here, here's food. And I'm like, you're going to hit me. <laughs> like, you know, kind of like. <laughs> well, I think at the very least, the things we have to be found for is the fact that whatever that nightmare scenario that Russell Votes was talking about clearly didn't really happen. Didn't happen. Yeah. And now I want to know what that nightmare scenario was even more so because yeah. it didn't happen. And so I just want to, I just want to know because obviously they bypassed it and stuff like that. But now I'm kind of interested to see what it potentially could have been and how this was in, in basically any, every way so much better than it possibly could have been in that scenario. Was it supposed to be the men's or rumble or the women's or did it not well, get it specified? Just, it just said, we just know um, it was going to be an ending to the show. Yeah, All so, right, so. Whichever one they were going to main event with. So it, obviously they main event with the men's one here, but we don't know if that was decided just until like yesterday or something like that. Hmm. Nothing comes out to me as far as like I think that might have been know. the way that they went. Unless I it might have been Orton. The Miz thing, the Miz cashes in and then Goldberg just wins the rumble. And yeah. I'm glad that they went with Goldberg losing clean. Yeah, I, I think maybe that Nightmare scenario did involve the Fiend stuff, and that's why you basically got no Fiend involvement in either match, really. Maybe it would have been the type of thing where Goldberg wins and the Fiend challenges Goldberg. Maybe. Yeah, I'd consider it a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am hoping that on Monday Night Raw we don't get some kind of, like, now we're back to the Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt thing, and now we're going in this weird direction and we're doing that or whatever, but... At least as far as where Rumble is concerned, I'm feeling pretty good. So let's ride yeah, that wave. Yeah, great show. In many ways. And um, that's, uh, that's the card. Uh, any other thoughts you guys got? Uh, it's nice to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> is that sad to say? Yeah, it's just like Royal Rumble delivers for the second straight year. Yeah, arguably, like, arguably, it's been actually pretty good for the past like four, four or five years or so now. So, it started to build up the track record after those years of absolute shit in the mid 2010s. So, so yeah, like it's it's nice to have the Royal Rumble being an event that we can consistently look forward to now until it burns us again. Yeah, we'll see. We got at least maybe a little bit less than 24 hours. <laughs> we'll see if maybe something goes absolutely whacked out crazy um if we do get something like that obviously we will talk about that when it comes to whatever else we're doing uh the next thing you're going to be hearing from us though is going to be that special pick your poison podcast that we've done as part of the patreon there's a lot of peace in that sentence right there the, the special pick your poison podcast or the patreon uh where we're doing the rebooking of wcw starcade 1998 and i don't yet know still what we're going to do for our main event for this week it might be dictated based off of what happens on Raw. There could be some possibilities for play the game. Maybe we just do that for the hell of it. Maybe we do something like a wrestling with the past. Maybe we do a top rope list. I don't know. Drop your comments below. Tell us what you'd like to see, and we'll factor that all in. And we'll probably be recording that on Wednesday or Thursday or so. And then, of course, at the end of the week, we're going to do the next episode of the Hot Tags, and then you're going to get another episode of the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast, which is getting towards the end there on that one. Only a couple more weeks of that, right? Yeah, there's only um, up until the, I think, last week of February is the final uh, official episode, as it were. Uh, next one we've got uh, coming up will be episode 33, so obviously on next Saturday which includes a main event of Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit because we haven't seen that enough times already in the series. And I'll watch it again with a smile on my face. Uh, a tag team championship match between Los Guerreros and Team Angle. I'll watch that with a smile on my face too. <laughs> and a surprise giant crate in the ring for The Undertaker. Oh, no. There <laughs> so, goes the uh, smile, so... <laughs> Anyone comes out yeah. of a crate, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> So uh, hopefully you can look forward to that side of things. Um, I might, might as well just branch over with the um, Fantasy League stuff as well because there is a little bit to discuss in that regards. Yep. So in terms of the uh, prediction contest, obviously you should be following the Fantasy League over on the Smart Cat Moment website. If you do get the opportunity to check that out, see what the current scores and teams look like. Uh, in terms of the predictions, 
it was a clean sweep for myself, Wago, and Rob <laughs> in the predictions. Uh, Tony got both Royal Rumble winners incorrect by saying Bro- uh, Daniel Bryan and Rhea Ripley, whereas myself, Rob, and Wago got Edge and Bianca Belair correct. So it meant it all came down to the time predictions, so who got the closest time. Uh, it's safe to say that Rob was the outlier by having a combined time of 2 hours, 17 minutes and 45 seconds for both Rumble matches. So you were expecting both Rumble matches to go over an hour and like 5 or 6 minutes. Yeah, because they not. usually go an hour because they're supposed to be 2 minutes, supposed to be 2 minute intervals. They usually go 58 minutes. Whatever. I, I did the math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it was all close between me and Wago in that regards, but Wago was the one that got it closest with a time that he predicted of one hour, 55 minutes. I believe, even though it's not to the second, the, the approximate time of the two rumbles was around about uh, one hour, 57 minutes and 20 seconds. So he was closer than my two hours, three minutes and 47 seconds. So Wago wins the prediction contest for the Royal Rumble. He'll get the benefit of two extra draft picks if he wants to use them at some point, which I assume he will do because he's saying that he needs to get rid of Bray Wyatt at some point, which he probably should have done quite a while ago, really, because he's about to lose 30 points, I think, this week Ooh. for not appearing. <laughs> Unless he does appear on Raw, obviously, in which case he's fine. Oh, man, now I really hope that he doesn't. <laughs> I hope even at the very least that he like pops up on like uh, the week afterward. It's <laughs> just like, I'm going to get rid of Bray Wyatt, and then he pops up. Honestly, the numbers look pretty ridiculous for this week side of things. So just as a like, just for this week in particular, just off the base of the Royal Rumble, Tony scored 115 points so far. Woo! Of both, both built off the back of Roman Reigns, Sasha Banks, and Drew McIntyre defending their championships, and Bianca Belair winning the Royal Rumble. And in comparison, I have the next highest with 17 points, which is also off the back of the Edge winning the Royal Rumble. So you can see what sort of shit state I was in before that. Uh, thanks to both Charlotte and Asuka losing matches. Um, then it's Rob with three points. Basically just scored <laughs> completely off Paul Heyman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, he got... Um, it's, uh, the interesting one was uh, our truth really. Because oh. our truth on this show lost two pay-per-view matches, technically, and won a pay-per-view match, and then lost two championships and won one championship so got an overall score of five points for that that's well that's the, ma- fun. the math works out trust me and then Wago is currently on minus five because everyone that he had on the show uh lost either kevin owens in the world title match or everyone else in the royal rumble so but fortunately it evened out because they lost in the rumble but then also that was also the main event of the show so they got the main event bonus all uh, evens out. But uh, yeah, that's what the Fantasy League is looking like right now. I'm still in the lead. Tony has closed the gap significantly if the scores stay similar to this between now and that, and now and the end of this week. And yeah, it's still a battle between Rob and Wago over who gets the wooden spoon. But and, listen, uh, I, want, I want it to be known. Hey, I called Edge a long time ago. I knew the score would come. <laughs> I just he was costing me too many points along the way. Yeah, and I had points to burn, so I just decided to keep him for a, a month or so, knowing that there was a slight possibility he wouldn't turn back up. But he did, <laughs> and he paid me back, so good on Edge. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's what the Fantasy League looks like. Obviously, you can f- check out all of the stuff on smartcatmoment.com, including the power rankings and that my stuff, but also the triple threat and the all the other stuff that's in there that you can check out and follow me on twitter at wigmeister14 and that will end my diatribe there yeah i'll i'll talk about my stuff next you should check me out every day on fightful.com fightful select go check out fightful scraps you can see me on the men's royal rumble watch along go check out uh fanboys anonymous for doing the review to a kill i'm sure tony will tell you more about that and you can just keep following me on Twitter at Dude Felice. I feel like I've missed something there, but you guys should know by now. I got stuff happening on Bleacher Report. Uh, the very next article I'm going to write up after this high and low point kind of thing that I just did for the Royal Rumble is uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, a couple hours from now. I got to write up my who are they going to challenge at WrestleMania post. 
and I'm going to be doing some other stuff later on. So stay tuned to, you know, the Twitter and elsewhere and you'll see uh, some posts about those things. Fanboys Anonymous, of course, does have things happening there. The next uh, episode of A Review to a Kill, I remember correctly, is a review of uh, From Russia with Love. So check that out on next Friday. We're actually going to record You Only Live Twice pretty soon. We, we're jumping ahead of the game when it comes to these. So, uh, you know, if you're into the James Bond stuff, check that out. We got other things that are happening there, though, too. So show some love over to Fanboys Anonymous and keep checking out smartcatmoment.com for everything else that's happening there too. And we will see you when we see everybody. So thank you for listening to this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed the Royal Rumble as well. And hopefully you have a great day. We will talk to you next time. But for now, this has been another Smart Out Moment and we're being counted out.